Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Once Upon a Witch Light. We would really appreciate it if you could like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check the bell so you never miss an episode. And of course, while you do that, we will read some comments from episode 35 of Once Upon a Witch Light. Uh, quote, number one. I finally caught up on all the episodes and started on Icebound. I imagine that these characters in this campaign would still be stuck in the egg. <laughs> yes. Number two. Yes. That's true. Came for Chuckles, stayed for the Beezleberry. Oh. oh. Number My three. My favorite. Oh, Voodoo Gun, how I've missed you so. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Big same. And same. number four. I am enraptured by the wonderful stories found in Once Upon a Witch Light and Icebound. You are all a treasure, and I thank you Aww. deeply for your continued entertainment. Much love, Bear the Wizard. Thank, thank you, you, Bear, Bear the Wizard. Bear. And of course, uh, if you're watching this now, leave a comment below, and maybe next week your comment will be picked. In the meantime, if you so choose to support us, check out our merch shop and the Patreon. Links below. Thank you. Tonight's stream is sponsored by Audible. So if you want to check out Audible for 30 days, for, for a month, you want to check it out, you get to check it out for free, and you get two free audiobooks in return. And if you don't want to continue with your subscription, you get to keep those two audiobooks, which is awesome. Uh, so as is yeah, tradition, yeah, yeah. tonight's audiobook of the stream is uh, mm. Dirty Billionaire Trilogy mm. by Megan March. I've got a big... Ego and an even bigger bank account. Mm. That's pretty much where my bio ends. And honestly, I don't think I need to say anything else. Do I sound like a jerk to you? That's because I am. And guess what? It works for me just fine. Or at least I thought I did until I met her. Books talk about sparks flying. Screw that. With her, it was like emergency flares mixed with jet fuel. Or maybe just a straight up napalm. <laughs> Only one problem. She Hell wouldn't tell yeah. me her name or her number when she disappeared from my hotel room after the hottest night of my life. Been there. Now I've got a taste for the perfect woman and I need it again. So what does a jerk do? I took this problem to the street. A mixed connection, a missed connection gone viral. And when I find her, she will be mine. So use our link and you can enjoy this book along with thousands of others. Uh, Audible, check it out. It doesn't cost you anything and it really I'm helps actually us intrigued, out. I'm actually intrigued. I don't know. Like, yeah. 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 Does he find her? Does she Does, turn I again? Don't, I don't think that's going to demonetize us like last week. Hooray! Hooray! I tried to like, find something that was a little dicey, yeah, but nothing yeah. crazy. What if, you know? what if he never finds her? What if the, that's a, if <laughs> Well, the only way to find out. Yeah. That's why it's so important to yeah. use yeah. our link. Download our trial. Find out now. Because the last video got us demonetized. <laughs> the last ad read. Yeah. For so. her sake, I hope he never finds well, her. Well, you got to download Audible to find yeah. out. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage, Rich. Once upon a witch light hour, the sleeping queen stirred in her tower and through grand halls past lock and key came to her slumber dreams of three. The first brought laughter filled with fright, the second love defiled by spite, the third a world of pure delight. She welcomed these, they were her own, but soon from porcelain lips a groan, her silvery dreamscape now forsaken, to pain from which she'd not awaken, something blighted had come hither, Foul as nightshade creeping thither, From yon the grave-like curse did wither. The little prince wept in his spire, His wounded heart had one desire, A ballad from the dreaming queen, Could turn his maelstrom mind serene. He vowed her rescue, speech sincere, But toys would be his shield and spear, And so he scoured for one full year. In springtime wreathed in parenthood, The prince first found a toy of wood, a doll set, beasts and wild things, but listen close and each one sings. A song of child, owl, and bear, a song that calls the spirits there, a song for monsters with much hair. When summer heat steamed like a kettle, the prince then found a toy of metal, a rocking horse with ashen mane, around its neck was draped a chain. Its horn and eyes and nose shoot flame with mighty hooves and sturdy frame. No better steed one could proclaim. He searched from autumn's harvest throne. The prince then found a toy of bone. Lettered blocks stacked to the sky when turned to words could only lie. Deceit known to the hounds of hell makes for a potent hex or spell. 
of souls, of sin, of shadow fell. Through winter's chill, from peak to pass, the prince then found a toy of glass, marble spun in measured motion, like careful thought or certain notion, each glinting cat's eye seeing all, from stars beyond the cosmic sprawl, to inner strength and mind's recall. When season stopped, the final day, at last the prince found halves of clay. He shed a tear, this would not do, his favorite toy was split in two. It stank and had a horrid face, but in his heart held special place. Through toil this crack he would erase. The day has come, no time for rest. The fateful toy is placed in a chest with stripes of white and stripes of red, just like a big top by his bed. The little prince prepares a flower for either outcome, sweet or sour, and makes a wish for love, for power. Once upon a witch light hour. You stand inside a thatched hut. It has been three days since you won Electrum Chef. But for you, no time has passed at all but one single evening. And all of that has led you here to this moment where you are surrounded by bullywugs. Bullywugs you know to be the enemy of the king, the resistance. And something you have, have done has triggered their ire. As some of them surround you, spears and weapons pointed directly at you. As up on the, um, on the, on the balcony, on the second story, you see three of them holding aloft a wriggling bag as one of them holds their hand out as if ready to cast a spell or magics or something. As the largest of the group jumps down off of, uh, off of the second floor and addresses all of you, that he is Illig, the Duke of Muckstump. You are now his enemy. And if you don't do as he says, Twig will be killed. He stands up crosses his arms and looks directly at you, waiting for your move. He does not seem nervous. He knows that he holds a hand that is quite high. <clears throat> this is the worst song for this. This is so <laughs> chill. <laughs> so just to remember, it's Zelda's lullaby. You, you falcon kicked the door down. Mm -hmm. You came busting in with voodoo gun. Torbeck got off the, oh. the snail very carefully and like just sauntered behind everybody. How did you guys enter? I stubbed my toe. You stubbed your toe, and Gricko? I Tom Cruise out of there. I have, okay. I have broken sunglasses. Okay. Sliding down uh, snail number two shell. That's right. And I'm rolling. I'm rolling very awkwardly after uh, after the group. And as things settle, he looks towards all of you. And his eyes go specifically to Kremi, who's holding out, or now in this case, Briggsy, who's holding out a weapon directly in front in front of his his face. He stares down the barrel of your voodoo gun and he says, I'm not afraid of any of you. I have what you want. Allies of the king. The resistance will survive. What do you want exactly, Illig? What? do you want in my home? Outside of this thing we have here. Oh, that's it. We don't want anything else. That's the, we can just take her and leave. We'll get and out of here. that is why you've played the Bunko card? Yes. We played Bunko because it is a game that requires no skill, and we enjoy it as an excuse to drink Are wine. Are you insulting me, little green one? Oh, I thought... I thought that Bunko was a code name. Ah, uh, Torbeck doesn't know what Bunko is. He seems like really is. confused to you from me. I'm actually gonna run. Tor Torbeck is, is also very confused. <laughs> uh, we keep throwing around this word Bunko, and Torbeck, it's been too long, and Torbeck's too scared to ask. <laughs> oh, I know. No, you will hush. Hmm. You alluded to one of my men that you were part of the resistance, mm -hmm. and then. 
you freed a knight of the king, provided him with protection, emboldened the entire village to his rapture, in rapture, you have turned the people of downfall against the resistance, all in a manner of days, and yet you claim to be a bunko buddy. <laughs> Says this seriously. <laughs> I thought back to that muggy day on the equivalent of a July night. <laughs> I was in a bunko den with my informant, the gnome. You get high on totes, train stories. And all I could think to myself is, what the fuck is Bunko? As I shift and transform back to Kramish. Does the gun become a cane? Uh, I'm just like Tony Anna. Yeah. As this has been happening, um, I will uh, have been communicating with whatever is inside the bag. Uh, I assume Ooh. that we can't tell if it's twig or not, that it just feels All you size. see is uh, the equivalent of a um, of a burlap sack, and it is roughly the size that would hold a twig, um, but yeah, you have no clue whether it's actually twig. I reach out with my mind, mm -hmm. and I will uh, twig make no uh, verbal response. If this is you, can you respond in your mind to uh, my voice? Uh, is this how you're responding to the mind? God, I don't know how to do this. I'm over my mouth, but I'm trying not to make no voice noises. You're doing fine. I can't hear you at all. And, uh, oh, God, I farted. Sorry. Uh, well, that's fine. Uh, you I'm can... nervous. No, fart again. It's hilarious. <laughs> you'll, you'll be able to Dutch oven him. I well. couldn't stop it. It came out frost. You know, smell it. Just control also, it. Also, what the fuck is going on? Just control it. <laughs> Just control it. I'll try. Just make sure you don't go too far. Okay. You're trapped inside of a burlap sack. It could get real messy. Oh, God, I think he noticed. Okay. Just Coughed a little. Look, I think there's a way I can get you out of there if you were to just <laughs> relax and I could uh, warp you to our side. But we're gonna—I'm gonna let this play out for a moment and see how things go. All right? I'm scared near frost. You don't have to be scared. Just live in there with your farts for now. <laughs> it smells real bad in here. <laughs> Why did you tell me to do it a second time? I, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Oh yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought perhaps it would disturb the illig. How did you get into this mess? Well, I was I was trying to go to sleep, you know, and then I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically how I got in here. You woke up inside of a fart sack. <laughs> was it farting at the time, Frost? <laughs> well, I, you could have been farting while you were sleeping. No, so I woke up and I thought it was crummy because he was just kind of grumbling, being a dick face. You know, like crummy does. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't him. It was a bunch of grumbling, dick face bullwugs. Yeah. Not with real. Anyway, not like what happened to Torbeck that one time. But anyway, what? And then they dragged me away and I tried to. Cut one of them, I sliced his leg, and now my dress has got blood on it. You sliced someone's leg? Yeah, I did, got him with my little dagger. Is, are they dead? Did they? Did you get an artery? No, no, <laughs> punched me. Mm, it was probably for the best. <laughs> it was for the best that he punched me? No, no, that, that he didn't die. That'll ease negotiation. I think they're saying something important. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> Adam is a big misunderstanding. All right, no, we 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 are allied with you, but we think that we just we just went through a lot to make this swamp a better place. And I just wanted to make sure that we're aligned, and that we all like the new king. We want to keep him around so we don't go back to how things were. You understand? Yeah, he seems like a pretty nice guy. Torben doesn't understand why we all can't just get along. That's why we killed his loyal mount as a message. Who <laughs> <laughs> fucking killed the loyal mount? Oh, you, oh, you did. You did. You, 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 you see him look towards Kremmy. He looks really skeptical. But as you said, you killed his mount. He turns to you and you see a sly smile on his face. You killed the king's mount. Oh, uh, no, 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 yes, we, we did. We no, killed we the king's mount to send a message. Allegedly, well, allegedly. he killed him and then you kind of gutted him from the inside. I uh, made sure the job was done. You Top killed Vronk. I killed, well, we killed Vlong from both ends. We, we, blew, we blew out from both ends. What proof have you that Vlong is dead? <laughs> He's covered in Vlong guts. <laughs> if you would like to sniff me, I will allow it. Yeah. I smell like the death of toads. 
He's also like ten feet that way, just in the other house. Yeah, just go peek you out just the door. Poke your right? head in the other house. You don't see it. He looks over to one of the guards. Um, the guard slowly makes his way over to you, spear raised, and you see as he starts sniffing you. He like reaches out and picks some of the viscera mm, off of you yes. and looks at it. He licks it. Oh he god! Looks over, I told I wouldn't do that. He looks over to Illig. He goes, mm. "Looks about right, boss." <laughs> Hmm. We've come to Pear Lee with you. I'm sorry, you've come to what? <laughs> to Pear Lee. <laughs> Who's Lee? To Pear Lee like pirates do. We were just with the pirates. I mean, so it I means you... parlay. You what happened what that to means? your voice? Uh, I mean... Wait, and your so, entire all of you. So you, you're telling me that we didn't encounter a crossroads and through the magic of the crossroads get teleported to this room? No. No. Oh, no, no, you... You were changed for some time. <laughs> I'm not sure how to describe it. Yeah, you murdered that big frog in, in cold blood. At least, was at least, frog? at least that was the tale. I was inside of its guts. It did eat me, so I appreciate you for saying. Oh. Anyway, we've killed the king's mouth to send a message. Installing a puppet monarch is far more reasonable for the for your aims because he's moldable. He's weak in the mind. He wants people to like him. A real pushover, you know. So all you got to you would say, hey, we're enacting cultural change. And then he's malleable, like a lump of Play-Doh, you know what I'm saying? So now all you got to do is whisper all of your policies, like on the economy, foreign policy, uh, a trade. Get rid of all of the tariffs. Why do you got those? <laughs> this is a silly frog town. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then if he gets out of line, remember what happened to old Volgunk or whatever whatever the frog's name was. And then you can puppet him from the shadows like a real government. <laughs> and how do you expect myself and my men to gain an audience with the king in any way we would be able to negotiate with said puppet king, given the fact that we are known as a resistance? There are wanted posters with my face on them. You say you're with us. We have a royal pardon, a royal decree that all of the Bunko Buddies shall be pardoned. <laughs> and that they will be installed. They'll be pardoned and you will be exiled. Hey, hey, but you're not going no place. You all put on fake beards, uh, and then you live as the new advisors of the new administration. And you puppet him from behind the Why scenes. Why look like an idiot? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who in their right mind is going to believe that Illig, the Duke of Muckstump, is not Illig, the Duke of Muckstump, simply because I'm wearing a beard? Okay, we get rid of the exile. Like, that was a little... I don't think we need that. Extreme. I, I think the new king needs some kind of counsel, and I think if you came together and you negotiated and found peace... I think that could be a great olive branch to extend to the king, and the king could there extend it to no you. There will be no peace in Downfall, as long as the leader of Downfall is someone not appointed by the people. Well, I mean, he's a kind of nice guy. Could we hold, like, an election? You know what I mean? Like a... Oh, that's right. An election. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. You democracy. think he's going to will it. You think the entire court of those idiot bureaucrats are going to allow there to be some kind of vote in the chance that... Someone else would rise to power and they wouldn't have everything that they've grown accustomed to? Yes. <laughs> Once again, I ask. Well said, Frosty. Do you think me an idiot? No. Uh, uh, to Gregor's earlier point, this king is quite malleable. And if you think that yeah. the people of this uh, community aren't going to enjoy a game of popular opinion where people's coolness and popularity is exactly what determines who gets oh. to be their leader, that seems like exactly the thing they would do. Roll a, uh, roll a persuasion check Ooh. at advantage because it's a very good argument. Also, we need to talk about our tax policy. And for what it's worth, Greco's plan with the beard was a good one. Oh, thank you, Torbeck. One time, Torbeck at the carnival burned off all his facial hair because of an accident. Severe burning and scarring, completely unrecognizable for several years. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't listening to anything you were saying. Oh, I forgot about it. Oh. When you burned the hair off of the you get face. here? Torbeck? Yeah. Torbeck's all in here. 
No, you haven't. No, he ha- he has. So, oh. so, go, get a guard on him. Oh, he's, he's very a sneaky. Guard scuttles around. He's very a, sneaky. I'm that's, 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 it's because you're so sneaky, too. It but never sneaky. stings any less. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Illig? Do you see what we're trying to do here? We're trying to make sure that everyone comes together. Can you smell that? It's the smell of freedom. You know, that's twig. <laughs> what is that smell? No, oh, I thought it was the toad. Why don't we have the rest of this conversation with you putting our friend down? Watch out, you no. open the bag, or it'll be very painful. I don't think I will. For you. I will keep. I will keep your friend until the conversation is done. Well, that's fine. We are fine with collateral. We are used to negotiating with terrorists. <laughs> we do this all the time. I'm sorry, what did you call me? I mean, a terrorist isn't a bad thing. It's a... A political terrorist. A political, no an idealist, calls. an idealistic terrorist. That's right. Committing acts of terror to destabilize the local government's eyes and stop talking. He raises his hand and snaps, and you see the two uh, the two uh, frogs that are closest to Twig. They move in, and they start to hold the bag more tightly. It starts to wiggle a little bit less. We're trying to help with terrorism. I mean, uh... No, 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 no. You come into my house, and you insult me. You come into my town, and you destabilize what I'm trying to do for this place. Who do you think you are? You are no Bullywug. You are... You are no member of Prismere. You don't belong here. What happens here has no effect on you the moment you leave, and yet you think you can walk in here and do whatever you want, and destabilize whatever you want, and it will have no ramifications, no no effect on anything. Well, I mean, kind of has a point. In our defense, it's been pretty unstable before we got here. I mean, and I am trying to fix it. Well, I feel like we did a pretty good job already. I mean, why, why mess with that? You know what I'm saying? By putting an unstable, malleable king in place, so that when you leave, some idiot can get into his ear and make him turn things to back to the way they were, or a place even worse. Have you thought about what will happen when you're gone? How about a compromise, eh? Very valid point that we're just kind of shaking things up and it doesn't affect us. And it's like we're applying our own uh, prime material realm uh, morality onto uh, different peoples. We're getting a little deep with this uh, with this uh, allegory. Uh, what are you saying? What I'm saying is, so we're going back to Frosty's idea. We're going to have an election. And the best part about the king, he didn't want to be king. It's because his brother got drowned in the swamp as a frog, which is very impressive. <laughs> uh, and he, I think mean, he got it. And so if we run a legitimate... His throat was slit and he was pushed into the murky water. Oh. Um, that like makes a lot more sense. Some Game of Thrones shit. <laughs> Anyways, we have an election. I would bet you that... Uh, that uh, our friend, the king, would rather throw and job, as they say, <laughs> and then you get to be king or an elected, no, 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 not no, a no, king. No. Look, we didn't do the opera and I am Electrum fucking chef just to have the king get outvoted by this guy. Yeah, that was a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? Here's a compromise. We'll put you on as high council. We'll invent a council to, for him to put you on, and you can pick a few of your friends, and we'll kill the hag, and then we'll leave. You believe mm-hmm. you can mend relations between the resistance and the crowd? I do. How? What power have you to be able to accomplish such a feat? You may have the ear of the king. Is that going to convince the entire gentry? You haven't tasted my grums. (laughs) 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 And his cuttlefish stew. Oh, my cuttlefish stew, too. Oh, man, doesn't get better than that. You make a cuttlefish stew. I do. Well, I do now. (laughs) 
Look, it'll all work out. The king will just be a fingerhead. And that's definitely <laughs> way sorry, different dude. than what Torbeck thought that that meant. Did you say a fingerhead? Fingerhead, yeah. The I king see. will be one. I see. Oh. You see as he kind of looks over to some of his guards and they go, <laughs> A puppet of the people, easily malleable. Look, when he was cuckoo bananas on drugs, he was talking about a lord of coin and a lord of like ships or something. What else was when there? When the king was cuckoo bananas on drugs. No, not the king. Rico. <laughs> oh. Ooh, who, I guess, Unfrozen peas. Uh, I guess he was a king from a certain point of view, but <laughs> the point is, is that if we just have, look, we make up this council, it's kind of like democracy in the sense that, you know, y'all can maybe internally you know, draft Get us some... seats and a table. And you see as some of the bullywugs begin to um, pull some things out of a side room, and there is a large table Ooh. that is set up and seats for all of you. Torbeck will go to sit in a seat, and a bullywug will get there quick. Oh, and then he'll go over to another seat, and Griggle sit down. Oh, okay. And then he'll go there, and another bullywug. Oh. <laughs> Torbeck will just stand. Uh, before we negotiate, and it is clear that it is in our best interest to work together, will you release our friend? I think the threat of violence is no longer required. No. When the negotiations are over, and I feel that you are no longer a threat to me or my men, I will release your friend. How can we negotiate? Until then, while as you long, have our friend kidnapped. Maybe as out. long as I as long as you promise to do no harm to me or my men, she will remain safe. Can we keep one of your friends kidnapped and threaten him with violence? No. <laughs> we walked well, into his house. <laughs> it's fine. I think I thought that's totally good. Yeah. Get the wine. Oh. And one of the bully ones um, brings out a large bottle of wine and starts filling up the goblets. I'll, I'll kind of start to stand up. Oh, Torbeck, were you looking for a seat? Were you looking to sit down? Oh, it's okay. Do you want to sit down? No, no, Torbeck is fine. It's were you, okay. Were you hoping to sit down though? Is no, that like no, no, Torbeck's comfortable. Okay. Don't okay. worry about okay. it. Okay, that's fine. You look comfortable standing. <laughs> I agree. The guy going around serving the wine has like a tray of glasses, and like Torbeck goes to reach out and just passes it. <laughs> Even with the water reach. Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's like just on reach the whole time. Oh, Torbeck didn't want one. Oh, I got one. Did you want some wine? No. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> Okay. Uh, a bully one does actually come up to you and hand you some wine. It really is um, all wine. of you are Thank given you. a goblet of wine. Oh, that's not good. And uh, <laughs> Illig looks to all of you. A drink in solidarity. A drink. Oh, do you have any grape juice for Hootsie? No. Oh. To commiserate our uh, getting together and working on the uplifting of downfall to making this a better place, to new friends. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, yes. Cheers! <laughs> Torbeck sucks it down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, like, I couldn't help but notice that keg that says grape juice behind you. <laughs> Drink. Ah, let me just uh, savor, uh, you know. <laughs> The fair are synonymous with uh, quality in wine. You notice that they're all watching you. I am going to try to sniff to see if I detect as a druid any kind of uh, poison. Okay. Roll a nature check. Oh, the fair. I'm going to twist. I'm going to twist. Nature check. Got uh, Excellent. I think it's a 16. Let me check. You should have had my characters out. No. It's a 16. You do not sense any foul smells. Oh, well, from the, when you put it like from that. The from, <laughs> from the wine. <laughs> oh. Oh, do you have wine charms so we can know which glasses are? Uh, a bully was on the side of you puts in a straw. Oh, so at least I'll know mine. 
<laughs> oh, it's so much easier to drink with a straw. Thank you. I need one of you to roll a d12 for me, please. <laughs> it's paper and it dissolves instantly. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> paper straws, that is the first thing we need to tell the king about. <laughs> Fuck this! <laughs> now, what is your plan? And will you be here to enact it? If you have no pressing matters on your plate, we can begin tomorrow. Uh, how long an eve? I think we can get it done in an afternoon, maybe an evening. Yes. yes. So tomorrow, you will stay here with us until tomorrow evening when you can gain an audience with the king and convince him that the resistance is for the people. Why wait? We're kind of on a time crunch. Yeah, we could do it now. Something totally unrelated. There's like a... You're available to go now. Yeah, we, we'll do it now. Yeah, we... we we got something going on in like 10 days or something. The king, the king is Maybe. like 50 feet that way. <laughs> 11 days. The king is across the river and diagonal. One swan boat will take us at least only like 10 hours. To and you have there. a boat at your disposal. We do. Yep, yep. It's a giant swan boat. Did you know that Frosty wanted to fuck a giant swan boat once? <laughs> what on earth does that have to do with this conversation? I don't know, I don't know. I just I felt like it was relevant and now I realise that it's not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And it's you, the wine's already getting to me. And it is. The wine is already getting to you. As you begin to look around and you see that all of your friends Frozen do not look like themselves anymore. All of you are looking around the room and every single person in this place looks like a skeleton version of themselves. At first, it's just almost as if you have x-ray vision. You can see through them to the skeleton beneath. But as you look longer and harder at each person, their flesh fades away. And it is skeletons all the way down. Oh, what the fuck? This again? <clears throat> um, guys... This is like the mushroom forest all over again. Torbex really freaking out. <laughs> You guys all seeing skeletons too? Uh, I look at my hands. About? Do I see skeletons? You do. Spooky. <laughs> Are we dead? What? Is this what being dead feels like? No. Trapped in a frog hut with <laughs> a party bag in the room. What are you talking about? I don't look like a skeleton to you. You're an alligator. But not like an alligator skeleton. No. I flip open my little compact mirror. I might. Take a look. What do I see? A skeleton. Ah! <laughs> well, I guess I should be a clown. Skull, you know? There we go. Uh, just to make sure, everyone in the room, no one else sees skeletons. <laughs> no? no? What? Who's no. to a vote, maybe? I think, I think that we're the only ones who see skeletons. How about this? Raise your hand Is this some if kind you see of... skeletons. <laughs> Not a single person, but you guys raised your hand. Oh. Right. Raise your hand if you don't see any skeletons. <laughs> All the other hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this is going to go straight to my thigh bones. <laughs> we're, we're just going to have to get through this knowing that we see skeletons. <laughs> Wait a minute. There was drugs in the wine, fellas. I think it's drugs. If you look at if you look at Torbeck, like starting from his toes going up, his toes are like all fucked up, and like it's all like his bones don't make any sense. Like it's all fucked. He's got like extra joints as you go up his legs. There's like a couple of ribs that are like the wrong direction. His skeletal his skeletal structure is completely fucked. Oh, can we not see all the end here? Like yeah. it? Oh yeah. my god. Who see? Oh. This is why you should always drink your milk. Because of Uncle Torbeck. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> oh, uh, if you don't already have an extremely powerful uh, dairy lobby, we should make sure one is established so that uh, it is encouraged that uh, people drink more milk than they really should. Especially frogs. I knew I broke my finger that one time. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you can see it. Wait a minute. Oh, does anyone have any oh, sticks, 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 sticks? Can I... Do you want to take this seriously or don't you? Hold on, I gotta, I gotta see if my ribcage plays, plays, like, plays like a xylophone. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it actually does work! Okay. What are you talking That's about? That's a bucket list. And all he hears is slap, slap, slap. <laughs> 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 oh. 
But we hear the yeah, you do, yeah. skeleton ribs really do sound like a xylophone, like the cartoons. <laughs> uh, we're all uh, uh, being um, influenced by the Fae. Uh, what we see all around oh, us. Oh, the wine! Are oh, because you're not from the Fae Wild. Yes, it's laced with just a little bit of witch light. Yeah, I told you, drugs. Mm. Oh. It gives it that added kick to really get the uh, bullywugs going, if you know what I mean. How best to keep your guards happy than to make sure they have the good stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. Torbeck doesn't understand why Torbeck isn't immune. Just chalk it up to one of life's great <laughs> mysteries. I guess there's no way to know for sure. Yeah, just another day for Torbeck. <laughs> He's missing some teeth. Like, like you can see he's missing teeth. And I, we can see other teeth floating around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. um, <clears throat> all right, so this is what I propose. It's kind of weird talking without lips, isn't it? It's kind of just, <laughs> Have another how you, drink. How you end sounds? And, oh, another drink? Oh, thanks. Uh, Torbeck yeah, doesn't like mind if Torbeck down. does. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Done. Gone. <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh, wow. Here's what we do. It's everywhere. Do you have some kind of like manifesto or something? I, mean, I, I, I presume you have something written up, like your ideologue, you know. Well, I drew my statement. Own comic once about <laughs> what I would be like if I were like a superhero. Oh, that could work. We can start with that. Uh, Fighting for the people of you still, have, you still have it? I mean, I do. I haven't shown it to anybody. Though. Well, I mean, I think that's a good... So you, you, you have to have some well, it's not, it's not like an official document or anything. It was, I just... I liked... You know, like uh, sometimes when you're doing something that you think is really great for a lot of people, oh, and yeah. you think, well, what if I had a cape? And oh. like, it's, it's a silly thing that I, that I did oh. a while ago. And it's like, it, a, really it rare, like a really crazy rare thing that happened to you. Like, like, what, like what are yeah, the like, odds? Oh my thing? God, that's exactly what it was like. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, well, what would happen if I, I don't know, if I was in the mushroom forest and I like, ate a mushroom that was like not supposed to be there? Yeah, yeah, and then all of a sudden yeah. I had magical powers yeah, and I was able to like, protect strange, everybody. It was really cool. No one else could do that. Yeah, yeah. So I did that. You didn't have to train anything to get that. That's kind of what uh, I'm so yeah. glad that you asked me about this. Uh, just, because you're speaking my favorite genre. Yeah, that's fella. what got me excited oh, about yeah. being part of the resistance. The, the last person that led the resistance was kind of a jackass, if I'm being quite honest. He didn't really care about the people of Downfall. I do. And that's all I want. I want them to be able to pick their leaders and to not have to deal with some numbskull who doesn't give a crap about them and what their lives are like, so that they're not... Swimming around in the dirt while everyone else is living up at that that castle doing whatever the hell they want. All right. On the backs of everybody else, yeah. you know what I mean? Here's my proposition. All yeah. right. All right. I, I can show you what I... What I but we can do that Oh, later. no, that's fine. That's fine that for now. No, no, we can, we'll look at it later. Later for sure, yeah. though. The king yeah. stays the king. All right? And then his kids will become king. And we protect them real good so that they don't get killed and their heads don't end up on spikes. You understand? But why? Because it's ceremonial, it's tradition. If someone uh, uh, gives gives people something to believe in, even though that isn't going to be the uh, the authority when it comes to governance, when it comes to how things are run around here. Fingerhead. Fingerhead. Yes. Yeah. What he said. Oh, fingerhead. But alternatively, we install a prime minister who basically runs the country, mm-hmm. and he's elected. Uh, and that way, the both you can how have do power. We, how do we make sure that the person elected is going to have the people's best interest at heart? Well, he'll at least be uh, the voice of the people in a first past the post democracy election system. Oh, first past the post. Oh. Is it, is I figured it, we'd do runoff voting. I thought, I mean, shouldn't it be That's a, a shouldn't, shouldn't we establish a constitutional republic based on electors no, instead no, of, no, 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 instead no, of just wrong. democracy? Torbeck's this is mob always, rule. First Andy, first, roll a d12, please. Torbeck's always been a fan rule. of single transfer vote. <laughs> Uh, Torbeck rolled a seven. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all. It was like, oh, democracy. I'm like, this is literally mod rule. It's a popularity contest. That sounds a lot harder to rig. All right, we're gonna have an election. We'll make sure that Mr. Illig here he wins. He's the first prime minister. And as you guys are talking, the skeleton, the skeletal system becomes covered once again with your flesh and your clothes, oh. and you feel yourselves coming back to normal a little bit. Your heads are. You're feeling a little lightheaded. This wine is very strong, uh. but you feel. Uh, uh, a sense of clarity come back to you as the effects seem uh-huh. to wear off. 
Can you crank the music, by the way? So we can, like... I love political discussions! <laughs> Establishing a new form of government! Can I change the song yeah. now? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is a good level for us, though. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Oh, anyway, now, oh, thanks for listening to my, my, uh, my mixtape. Uh, <laughs> I know, it, I know it was three hours long, but I just wanted to look for a wrap up with that one. Anyway, what were we saying? We've had so much wine. Uh, uh, Twig, are you all right in there? Um, yeah, I think so. They're holding me a little bit tight, but no, it's fine. You're talking about stuff I don't care about, though. Um, you haven't had an accident, have you? What kind of accident? I'm just checking. There's a, a emerging smells. Are you asking if I poop myself, Frost? I'm trying to politely, yes. I didn't poop myself, but you could just ask, not politely, and just say it out loud real quick. You did, you, you did not poop yourself. No, I didn't poop myself. That is remarkable. Thanks. <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah, I've been pooping myself since I was a wee babe. Do you want some wine? Oh, I'd love some wine, but I don't want to drink it through this dirty old sack. Well, there's there's straws. I don't know if you can get a straw through this dirty old sack. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. Okay. Are you going to go again and I have to keep listening to these guys talk about stupid things? What? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You want to just talk? Yeah. I can just ignore this. I'm real bored right now, Frost. Perhaps we can play a game. Okay, what kind of game do we play? All right, it's a word game. Okay. I'm going to say two words, uh -huh. and the solution to the riddle are two words that rhyme that are synonymous to the words that I say. What does synonymous mean? It means that the word has the same meaning. Okay. Um, so if I were to, uh, for example, say a uh, large mushroom, Mm, big fungus. Oh, you're close. You're very okay. close. What rhymes with fungus? Oh, um, hmm. Bungus, fungus? Oh, you're right, you're right on it. <laughs> Humongous fungus! Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> oh my god, I love this game! <laughs> and we can just start playing that. <laughs> I, I, I drift way out of the conversation and just sip wine and have this mind game with her. And we don't have to RP this, but we spend the next two hours developing a constitutional republic that installs a prime minister that... Roll a... Uh, roll a... Persuasion check. Straight. Because you're not RPing it. What do you mean straight? No, I was... I, if you were going to actually do this... I so I still have my modifiers. That. Yeah. 16. Okay. Ooh. Well, I mean, it all sounds great. On oh, paper. thanks. I worked really hard on that mixtape. What? No, we're not oh, talking about oh, that. Oh, okay. And, and as, as you look around and as you say this, you realize that your front tooth is loose. And as you push against it with your tongue, it falls out. And then the rest of them as well. And all of your teeth, you watch clatter to the table in front of you. And as you you reach up and you grab at your at your head, you realize that your hair is being pulled out of your your scalp in strands. You look around, Gricko, and Gideon's teeth are hanging loosely in his mouth. Gideon, you begin to notice that your teeth are falling out as every single one of you um, loses your teeth and. Here, as they soon all as, fall as out. soon as Torbeck's teeth hit the table, he's gonna look and then he's gonna touch the top of his head and say, Oh no, the disease is back! <laughs> and Torbeck underneath all that fur looks like a really elongated sphinx cat. Oh, <laughs> Torbeck thought this oh, no. was cured! You're gonna look like a sphinx cat. <laughs> <laughs> Torbeck looks like a naked mole rat. Right? Oh, 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 something has happened. Oh. <laughs> So many doctors visits, so well, many treatments. Yeah, uh, this is my nightmare. Oh, oh, oh no. Well, do any of you know how much Rogaine costs? We have to cover your whole body. Oh, it ain't cheap. At least fifty bucks a month. Oh, you still use Tim's. 
Oh, Our new sponsor. Oh, 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 Why are you all talking like this now? Look, I see something. It's not drugs. There is nothing in your hand. Well, if we oh. if we keep drinking, maybe you can go away. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, Gorman can't let these go to waste. No, no. <laughs> 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 Deep. Oh, what are you doing? Are you doing that, man? He, he scoops up some of his hair and starts oh. to absorb back and reabsorb it all. I don't think it was that you Is that necessary? It's like, like, it, it's like watching someone dry swallow Flintstone chewables. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Absorb back oh, needs God. the calcium. <laughs> I've been looking for a bag of tea! You got just said it, it just passed right through you. <laughs> well, I'm not anyway, can we continue? Can I'm, you just sign, please? Sign the Constitution. Can we have there, some more drugs, please? To sign. As I was trying to say, this. What on earth are you doing? This. This sounds like a fantastic idea. Oh. If we can get it to work. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is have a meeting with the king. Do we have him come here? On our territory. I can't Can you stop, stop playing with your uh, teeth? I I'm can't stop turning my gum holes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to put them back in. They ain't going in. Uh, no, no, I think we need to get you inside the castle with the king. And what, what protects us? inside the castle with the king. What is to say that the moment we're on his ground, you won't turn against us and have the guards imprison us? You'll say the same thing. I, I can't understand. Why do you have your your lips wrapped around your teeth like that? May we have some more drugs? You'll say it in a Pour them some more wine. It's also been the king has been assassinated every two days. It's not like the rebellion leader. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, Mace, can I have you roll a d12 for me, please? Or take wine to mark down the hair. <laughs> and more wine is provided for you. Three. Oh. Uh, can you roll again, please? Five. Thank you. Uh, uh, please, I might wine. Huh? Oh, I did something. Do my teeth reemerge? Not right the second. No, wherever no. your teeth are, they're going to go. <laughs> 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 Yeah, turn back mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you got like giant bruises in your head. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 But it is not shortly after <sighs> this that your hair and your teeth reappear on your body as if nothing had happened before. <laughs> 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 Oh, I hate that. Ugh. And Kremi, Ugh. it is as you are rubbing your mouth with your hands that you realize it is not your fingers that are rubbing against your your teeth, Ew. but no. your toes. <laughs> as your hands and feet have switched places. <laughs> there is almost no difference for Torbeck. Right. <laughs> I'm pretty close. They're slightly different shapes. <laughs> yeah. You almost wouldn't notice if you were just looking at Torbeck quickly. <laughs> It looked like a Rex Shasa. <laughs> <laughs> we really gotta quit drugs, fellas. Oh. 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 Do you have any wine without drugs? No, and it doesn't matter because the effects of this are gonna last at least 24 hours. Oh, well. Anyway, I'm gonna just pour more of this wine real quick. <laughs> oh, I'm impressed. Oh, 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 fuck. oh, there's one everywhere! Why are you doing this with your hands? Is this, it's all of this some sort of code? Are you, are you signaling to someone watching? No, 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 no. It's because right now my hand are my feet, and my feet are my hand. I think, I think, I'd have to take off my shoes in order to find out. <laughs> Does that mean that my shoulder is my hip? My hands are now my feet. Oh my gosh. I can smell everything. Oh, I'm swinging from the rafters. I've always wanted to be able to do this. Ow, oh, hey, smell my feet. Smell my feet. <laughs> what are you seeing him do as he actually clicks? Because it looks like he's using his feet to grapple onto, like he's doing it right now. Huh? <laughs> how, how does that, what, what is your perception of what Grego is doing at this time? His feet are just 
hanging over. He's hanging by his knees. Oh. Over the beam, well, and he's just swinging there like a child. Thank you for the information. <laughs> Torbeck goes to join Gordico, and his feet do this horrific <laughs> grunting motion. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, ah! <laughs> You pick up the goblet and you just smash it, <laughs> and your toe grabs. <laughs> it sounds like we're very close to having a deal, and. Perhaps uh, we can take a look at your comic later. <laughs> oh, so, I forgot about it. The evening is almost spent. Mm -hmm. I will put you up in rooms here tonight. And in the morning, we will make our way to the palace. We want a Tom Crunch from a very handsome uh, guy, we think. He wore a mask and he wore very tight pants. Yeah, we literally just, like, just woke we up. We just woke up. And so, like, we need you to... just woke up in the very late hours of the evening. Is that happening? You got a long rest. Uh, so however long that was. <sighs> we took your friend in, in the, the night. wee hours of the morning. It's been many, many, many hours since. Oh, I hate the mushroom forest. <laughs> Even if we find that goat, let's not, not go back to... Sad fish boy. I can't remember his name. That depressing. Oh, guy. you're talking about Coral. Oh yeah, Coral. Coral Ray. Hearts Ray. Hearts Ray. Oh, yeah, wow. really sad what happened to that guy. Isn't it weird that he had a heart related thing happen to him? And his last name was Hearts Ray. Before no. that happened to him. I don't think so. Anyway, does that sound good? Can can we just draft this constitution or what? Well, you have to take me to the palace to meet the king. So we're not going to sign anything. No no kind of agreement. No. Before we go to the king. No. All of this would have to be done in front of the king. With the king's signature being first and foremost. More of a ceremonial position. All right. Well, what kind of rooms you got? This is like a hut, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like a barn. <laughs> we have rooms at the castle. From, that from we the just outside, go to. it did look like a hut. Go. From the inside, it looks like a like an art, a large inn. Um, it's got a wide open space um, on the bottom. You can see that there's a bar off to the side. There are a couple of rooms um, that are clear, clearly storage areas and such. And then at the very back, there is a staircase that goes up, a wooden staircase. Um, and then there is a um, there is a uh, landing that wraps around. Um, with a wooden railing, and that's where Twig is being held. But you see that uh, lining those walls are uh, a plethora of doors uh, that clearly lead to rooms. Um, all right. Well, fellas, let's get an early night, and we'll get up bright and early in the morning. Oh, that's a great idea. Maybe we'll sleep off of this. <laughs> <laughs> Let us uh, pray. I don't know how I'm going to put my shoes on in the morning with uh, toes. Well, that's why I don't wear shoes. So look who's you fought. You've been arguing about with me how unhygienic it is. And now I have the last laugh as my like my hands are on the floor now. <laughs> like just in all of the frog gunk. <laughs> yes. Ah, yes. Rank, yes. You win this time. I win. You won the battle. So you see, you, your, your toe strength is very weak, Frosty, when you wear shoes. That's the trick. That's what the shoe lobby wants you to think, that you need shoes. It's ridiculous. Mm. See, look. Here, give me a, a, a jar of pickles. Ridiculous. A jar of pickles? Yes, please. Um, all right, I hug it, and then Where I kind of do... are you going to get a jar of pickles? I just assumed that there was a jar of pickles here. <laughs> you know, they're bread and butter pickles. Is that all right, Greg? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> Even so Torvac won't eat those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll sort of hug it, and then I'll do that, like, kicking feet thing that cats sometimes do when they're wrestling, and I'll endeavor to turn the entire uh, lid off. And, and, Roll in and... acrobatics. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to grab it. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm excited to find out. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, just dirty 20. Uh, oddly enough, it looks like he's going to knock the jar of pickles over on multiple occasions, but you are able to get the lid off. Um, and with a loud pop, the uh, smell of dill and I don't know what else is bread and butter. Mustard seed. Mustard seed, butter, vinegar. bread. Oh, I was going to open a, sh- a shitload of sugar. I didn't want you to a open it, Frosty. Of sugar. <laughs> I didn't want you to she open it. Up I got it. Air. Give me another jar. <laughs> <laughs> he brings another jar of pickles. Oh, 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 hold on, I'll set this down. <laughs> I smack it over. Oh, no, you spilled the pickles. <laughs> pickle Disgusting. Juice, pickle juice is spreading all over. Okay, the give table. me another one. <laughs> And I, my toes splay, and I grab one with the jar, and I just grip it real hard, and then I just grab my with my other toe, and I just pop it. Oh, See, wow. this is what walking, doing bare feet does. Look at that toe strength. Yes, but you're all calloused and stinky. <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 all about practicality, Frosty. These these shoes will protect my feet and are it smells a lot better. These bread and butter pickles. <laughs> Look at the splay action. Can you release our friend Twig? Yes, once we get up to the Yeah, I'll, I'll get this other one out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, any more jars we can break? Well, there's the, the, the grape juice keg I mentioned earlier. <laughs> That's for later. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna party. Do you have any more jars that we could potentially fumble around with? Um, <laughs> would you like another jar of pickles? Of I mean, uh, any any kind of jar, like uh, some, some kimchi, perhaps? <laughs> I believe we do have some kimchi. Oh. I'm bringing some kimchi. Oh, thank you. Kimchi? Ah, uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Anyone want some? <laughs> Any, anyone want some kimchi? No. Tobek? No. Tobek? No. Tobek? No. Tobek? No. Oh, here you go. Tobek, Tobek has to, like, right. bend way down, though, in order to get to your height. Yeah. And for you to be able to, like, dribble the kimchi into his mouth. So he does this weird, like, his knees are up past his head, and he's, like, all shrunken down. Ah. There we go. There we go. Like a hungry little bird. There we go. There we go. <laughs> get in, come oh, I'm stuffed, man. I'm sure, stuffed. it's good for you. Hey, yeah. It's good for you. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Y'all probiotics and good kimchi. Yeah. yeah, I want to keep the buzz going. I don't want to eat. Oh, I'll, oh, I love it. Well, uh, well, uh, Good night, then. We'll have guards stationed outside of your door should you do anything untoward. It will be dealt with. But we are going to trust that you mean what you say and that we have your word. We are men and of therefore, our word. once we get you to the room, we will provide you the bag. Oh, it's good for you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, Torment has a point, sort of question. Yes. More of a statement. <laughs> uh, Torment sometimes has night terrors. Will that be a problem? No, we'll keep an eye on you if you're clearly sleeping and tossing about in your sleep. We, there's no need, need to harm you. It gets very violent. <laughs> it's true. <clears throat> I believe it should be fine. If there are any casualties, we will have to deal with it in the morning. Oh, like all right. That's why Grico's missing his pinky too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it was my fault. Like I was a close. Yeah, it was not as, as he's <laughs> shoveling me. Uh, yeah, this is Kimchi just running down my chin. Oh, oh, oh! It's different when it's toe Kimchi. <laughs> Kimchi. <laughs> You know, I used to date a girl. <laughs> well, I think it's been a pleasure. <laughs> no, no, Torvac is interesting. <laughs> I think it would be better if you just killed us now. <laughs> I, I really wonder how you've accomplished the things that you've accomplished, a lot of you. It is a miracle. But I'm finding myself convinced. This is what is going to be best for downfall. So, <sighs> you may head upstairs, and the gents will show you to your room. All right, gents. Lead the way. Oh, is there room for a giant snail? <laughs> <laughs> no. <sighs> <laughs> the stable's like five feet across the room. Where are we going to put snail number two? Into the snables. Oh, they that's got a snables here? That's, that's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. There'd be snailbulls. <laughs> snailbulls. Okay. 
For I'll take care like, of snail number snail two. Punchables. <laughs> <laughs> Peanut butter and jelly. No, that's how it's called escargot. Wow. Oh. A bulls. <laughs> I well, escargot I bulls. I I'll, follow. I'm going to go. Uh, I mean, now that my l- limbs are swapped, I feel like we could really turn the snails into a pod racing scene. So I'm going to suborb my way out there. <laughs> you are not going to go anywhere. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, I've got a snail out there. Into your room. Oh, I've got a snail out there. Look, he really wants us to go to this room. So okay, fine. fine. Just make sure he has lots of food and snailables and everything else, and he's taken very nice care of. That is a prize racing snail. Do you know how much money I would lose if anyone stole my giant snail? Would you like one of my men to go outside and stable your snail? I would feel much better about it. If we could, because I would just be so, because he'd be in the, in the stable to prevent him from being murdered. It's a, very, it's a very, it's a very stable stables. So uh, just make sure that he's all right. Because I just we will got... make sure your giant snail is fed and Thank watered you. and safe Thank until you. the morning. I appreciate it. Oh, wait, waxed. wait, wait. Tormek, before we head up, Tormek suggests maybe you bring a uh, rope, lots of rope to tie Torbeck down in case of the night terrors. Maybe something oh. with more tensile strength, like chain links. Yes. The guys get uncomfortable if I'm left untied. Surely, if you can produce a sack, you can produce chain links. I think Gideon can handle us. We have chain links, guys. Yeah, I yeah. Bring it to you. Are you ever taking those off? No, I can but they extend my like chain to tie your friend down if it is necessary. Oh. Prefer using. We have chains. Yeah, we'll we'll chain. Torbeck always just assumed those were permanently attached. No, you wouldn't wear this part, man. You would just get tied up in the other end of it. Okay. Okay. What, what if you have to use the restroom? I'll just take them with me. Yeah. Nothing he hadn't seen before. I'll just take them off and just set them next to him. I don't want to take them off while he's having a night terror. <laughs> what if I look like Gricko in the morning? <laughs> That's true. Mm. What does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, it's an insult, right? Don't worry about it. Well, thank you. <laughs> We're going to go to our rooms now. Thank you for taking care of snail number two. I think it's just the one room. Our one room, which is very spacious. And with that, you make your way upstairs, and you are led to a single room. It is quite spacious. Ah, Um, There are no beds, however. Uh, There are simply hay mats and blankets on the floor. Um, But there are enough for all of you, and you are are placed inside the room, and as you enter, um, being the last person in line, you are handed the sack containing twig. Oh! Maybe. And you are moved into the room. The door is quickly shut, and you can hear the um, a sliding wood beam come down over the door, as well as some locks as you are locked into the room. Uh, there is a sliding um, window on the door, and it is opened on occasion, and you see they check in and watch you. And you imagine that there are other ways that you are being viewed as well. Mm. In the stables, as a hey, Paul, it is Pasam Pastrami, and Swiss needs more soul. Oh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got it. You got there before me. Um, Twig, I'm going to put you in the corner. Escape the bag at your leisure. Oh. Everyone, everyone, stand back from the from the sack. <laughs> the bag just wiggles and moves around. It starts to roll across the floor. I, I've, I've undone the... the it flat. continues to roll across the floor. <laughs> uh, Tweed, do you want some wine? You see um, you see the bag stop for a second, and then you see the um, beginning portions of a mushroom hat um, start to come out of the opening of the bag, and oh. then you see Twig's face and her large cracked Oh, uh, you want some wine? Uh, can you stay back? Oh, uh, it's Bunko night. Okay. We're going to have some wine. Yeah, you want to play Bunko after? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I was just going to pour it on the filthy sack and let you kind of suck it out of the, out of the burlap. I don't want to suck anything gonna... out of after what I've done in that sack today. I'm glad you were able to get it out. Yeah, Please don't wine board. You want to pour it into my mouth? Yeah, hold on. No, hold on. Very easily. 
I uncork it. Ew, why are your toes on your hands? <laughs> You'll understand when you have a little bit of this. Okay. Blah, 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 and blah, she blah, drinks blah. down a lot of, she's just chugging and chugging and chugging. You've and had a harrowing knot. Until there is not a single drop left in the bottle. Oh, wow. Wine. Gideon, you would be proud. You're like 60% wine now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I take out a bunch of dice, and I give everybody three dice. Oh. Let's okay. play Bonko. Okay, so how do we do this? What kind of dice are they D6s? Yeah, we'll just die. Can I get two more D6s? Can I get two oh, more D6s? That was a bad question. I only got the one. What? No, I gave you three dice. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I ate two of them. Yeah, oh, thanks. Okay, so how do we do this? I actually don't know. I just know that you just roll... Basically, it's a competition to see how fast you can roll a bunch of 3d6. Okay. Okay. All right, go. Okay. okay. No. Uh, oh, this is pretty good. Count them? I got a 15. Just keep rolling them. Oh, oh, them. Oh, oh, we got oh, 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 three sixes. On Torbeck's first oh. roll, one of the dice goes into a crack in the floor and disappears. Oh, <laughs> no. You hear a voice? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Vesta. I don't think that's how that works. Is that how you win? I assumed, I assumed it's the highest possible value. You won. No, I think, I think it's whoever rolls fastest, right? Oh. Okay. I'm rolling faster than no, everybody. No, I think I win. I'm, I'm rolling faster than everybody. No, no, no I'm rolling faster than everybody. Look at me go. Look at that's me go. That's not how it works. Yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? Like yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah, huh? <laughs> we do this into the night. <laughs> okay. Then we go to sleep. Okay. We'll see if we do anything else. No. I'm just gonna roll d6s as fast, or 3d6s as fast as I can. Which, this is why you should never drink wine. <laughs> Ever. Or other substances. And don't do drugs. And just play with your flower pad. And be good. Uh. <laughs> Oh, I guess I'm, I'm rolling with my feet. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. For sure. And with that, you go to sleep. And yeah. you get a long rest, and you wake up in the morning. Hot dog. Hot dog. Nice. It's rolling three of a kind of any matching pair, I guess. Oh. Matching. Wait, this is a real thing? Bunkum? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a thing of the people who play, apparently. Oh. Yeah, and it's it's literally just it's it's making fun of Funko Pops. Yeah. Well, that's how it started. Someone changed it to Funko, and I don't know. Yeah, incredible. It's really incredible. It's guys got a lot of layers. Like Learn something new every day. Oh, okay. Our, our, our limbs returned. Yes. Oh, thank goodness. I'll be knocking at the door as, as I wake up. Uh, you are actually woken up by the mm. opening of the door. Mm. Uh, people come in. Uh, some of the. Uh, Bullywugs come in and they leave uh, soup and bread uh, next to each of your bed and uh, a big steaming glass of <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It's coffee. They, they bring you coffee. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. <laughs> that that could have gone south real <laughs> quick. Uh, may you summon the Duke for us. It was the Earl. No, it was the Duke. Oh, the Duke. The Duke, please. <laughs> I, found one, I found one of his comics over here. <laughs> All-Star Illig and the Froggy Force. <laughs> what? That's very lame. We would like the steaming Duke, please. <laughs> Is that what you call this? <laughs> Oh, it tastes like steaming too. <laughs> that was chicory, but I guess not. <laughs> Torvik thought this was hot Jones. Oh no! Where did steaming Duke come from? Oh, this is a hot Jones, and they don't have hot Jones, unfortunately. Uh, how does anyone keep up with all of this? Uh, Unclear. <laughs> Uh, the Bullywug lets, lets you know that the Duke will arrive um, when he is available, that he is busy currently, but he will oh. come up to you as soon as he can. Well, thank you very much. Uh, any concerns about our day? I, I, we have to unite a kingdom and then hope that 
we're not killed horribly by a hag, I guess. I, how, how, how does the rest of this day go so we can progress and continue our mission to Here's what we do. get what we need to get done done? We install these fellows with mm-hmm. our whole plan, prime minister, election, and all that. Mm-hmm. And then I think the king's going to be safe. Uh, I think it's unclear whether we got to kill the hag or not. But it sounds like all we need is a little token. Or some sort of oh. drinking. Uh, although he wasn't very prescriptive in exactly what he needs. Can this be anything? I mean, may, uh, maybe it'll be obvious. It's one of those things we will know it when we see it all. No, no, long. my recollection was that it had to be representative or perhaps oh. even a focus of their power. Uh, so we're looking for yeah. something that represents her past, which... Uh, That's right. I thought it was gave the, away the Book of Grudges a while ago. I thought it was the present. Yeah, you imagine something like that oh, would have been... present. Perfect. Yeah, yeah we gave away the it thing would, that probably would have done it. Oh. You guys remember when the king said shitter wins? I mean, winner shins? <laughs> yes, I do. Well, that was remember. crazy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I mean, the way that I see it is that if we don't have to fight and kill a hag and potentially die in the process, I'd rather not. But, you know, if we feel like we did. She's gonna fucking ruin our day and piss in our cereal. Then I think maybe we. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Um, please continue, Mister Crammy. <clears throat> then you know maybe we just take care of it. You know what I mean? We agreed to meet her for dinner. Yeah, we missed that. Was like three nights. Yeah, we, we missed. We missed. Uh, days are flying by now. Yeah. Unless, unless we days can are steal flying by out from underneath her nose. We'll have a confrontation. I imagine she'll be somewhat wrathful. Well, what if we just uh, false flag and pin it on the uh, the those guys that had to shop another, again? Another false flag. Another false flag. We got that all set up already. Don't yeah. we? Don't they just have the books? No, so that, that's what I'm saying. They're don't probably f- executed already. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't make me not even sure the first false flag is done, and you want to start a second one? I mean, it's a winning downfall. <laughs> May as well. I mean, this is the time and place for it. I'm getting real sick of your political science degree. <laughs> I'm just saying, this is probably the only opportunity where it's going to be political machinations, okay? I, I mean, yeah, there's a whole lot of pain outside this whole realm. I think it's going to be nothing but politics. Ah, I mean, what these, what these guys are like all about like, oh, politics and the, the courts and such. I feel like this is the opportunity for us to just, just get it pin it on the uh, the Darklings, and we fucking jet. You know what I mean? We meet up with Clapperclaw, we get his cl- his head back, we sail out on his boat. Oh yeah, he is waiting for us. He, he is, we're waiting, what is he, poor fella. We have a lot to catch up. Poor little guy. Let's, let's He's just hanging and... out, waiting for us to do our thing that we promised him. Let's try and mediate this deal as quickly as possible. I, mean, I think it's a dumb deal. He probably thinks we're dead. sure that, you know, I understand he's making sure his interests are being seen to and protected. And so we're going to go. We'll explain to the king what the plan is, and I'm sure the king will go along with it. And, <clears throat> and then we'll deal with, with the hag. I, I, I don't know what to, what to tell you. I mean, why don't we take a vote? Speaking of democracy, there's an odd number of us. Ooh. Who wants to fight and kill the hag? There's an even number of us. Oh. oh, nice. He wants to fight and kill the hang? Yeah. Who's he? Twig? Oh, no, their votes don't count. <laughs> Who's your <laughs> company? Who's your razor paw? <laughs> no, Twig, you get a vote. Go on. No, oh, that's okay. I don't have to have one. Twig, no. you get a vote. You Twig, you get a vote. As long as you put your hand up, you get a vote. You just you complicate don't, it's a company it because it's, you know, no, it makes it an even number. But then we add a Hootsie. I'm thinking more of like sapient beings, you know what I mean? Who's he like, sap- <laughs> What? It's sapion. <laughs> I mean, she's kind of like a little critter, you know what I'm, you what? Know what I mean? She's my daughter. She, she has just a mind as you. Or, or especially Gideon. <laughs> yeah, probably equivalent. Yeah, not even yeah. are you kidding that. me? I mean, She's a bull person. Who's the only pawn in the game of life? <laughs> 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 Who's the only 
want to, to if, if 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 these bloodthirsty frogs, if these bloodthirsty frogs, um. Uh, get to 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 have democracy and their voices matter and they are all about bl public execution and heads on parks and Hoochie doesn't get a vote just because they have the ability to speak and Hoochie doesn't. A wise man in a robe once say the ability to speak does not make you intelligent. I did say that. We <laughs> can't possibly have transitioned our conversation from their democratic structure to just how we have conversations with each other and I think that's important. Structure. We're on the topic. And as you are having this conversation, you begin to hear a sound off in the distance. The sounds of trumpeting. Oh. Trumpeting that you've heard before in the halls of the soggy court. As it gets closer and closer and closer. You begin to hear uh, rushing outside of the door as the bullywugs in this place seem very confused and uncomfortable. And eventually your door swings open and a bullywug is standing there shaking. Uh, uh, the, the, the Duke wants to see you. The, the, the king is here. Someone say Russians? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? Fuck. What? Huh? Uh, oh, no. Uh, oh, I think it, you made a Russian. I think, yeah. it's a, I think it's a joke from another campaign. <laughs> uh, I think it's a Sylvie joke. Uh, the, the king. How serendipitous. <laughs> oh. Oh, this is gonna. I know how this looks. Like we may be plants, but this is a kawinky dink. No, we, we explain the plan, or otherwise we were political prisoners and we get them all executed. <laughs> what? So that's a plan. What? That's a plan. B. Did you get to vote on that? Did you even heard that? There's <laughs> so many pieces I've seen. Unbelievable! I fucking love it. Mm. Okay, we will go meet with the Duke right, right away. We got a plan. We got a plan. Kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> they are all dead. <laughs> Need to. I got it all figured out. I always have a plan B and a C. <laughs> the gang murders everybody. Yeah. <laughs> You make your way yeah. out of the room, and as you get to the head of the stairs, you see that the king is standing there in his courtly regalia. He has a crown held aloft on his head, a, a large cloak um, pulled tightly around his neck. You see that Snoodle is on a, a beautiful, delicate silver chain that's attached Ooh. to a ring on the king's finger, and he holds a scepter in his other hand. Um, he stands in the open door, flanked by what appear to be guards that go back behind him for as far as the eye can see. And Illig is standing there in front of him. They are staring each other down. Illig's guards are all around this room, but they do not have their weapons drawn, though their eyes are do not move <clears throat> from their duke as they watch his every move for any sign that they need to jump to action. As these two leaders of the different factions of downfall stare each other down, you hear Illig's voice. I'm sorry, my friends, my new friends. I might have been a little deceiving. Last night, I sent a letter to the king telling him I had you in captivity. It seems... You truly are friends of the king, as he has come to your rescue. Now, King Gullop the 19th, your friends are here, but they are in no danger from me. That's right. What to do? We had a conversation last night, and should you choose to hear us out, I will do them no harm. Do we have a deal? He reaches his hand out towards the king. The king looks between all of you. He, this is the first time you've ever seen him in such a kingly manner. And to the untrained eye, he would look like a king filled with power and determination. But you can see um, the flicker behind his eyes of fear. He is afraid, but he is here for you. <clears throat> no, 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 it's all right. It's all right. What, what to do, Mr. King, uh, your grace or your majesty, whatever you prefer. Snoodle, you're looking mighty handsome. Uh, what to do. Uh, no, we figured all, we get, we solved all your problems. We, we, we got a whole plan. We figured <clears throat> everything out. You don't have to worry about a thing. Do we have a deal? 
King Gullip the 19th. Gullip steps forward, he looks at you and he nods. He steps forward, he takes Illig's hand and he shakes it. Illig clasps onto his hand tightly and he says, Dismiss your guard. Oh, do you want to know what it is first? <laughs> the king lets go and raises his hand and dismisses the guard. The door is shut behind him. You could hear the guards lining up around this place, but none of them truly have eyes inside as he's led towards the center of the room. And once again, that same table and the same chairs are moved around into the room and the king sits down at the table as if he were one of you. He looks between all of you a little bit nervous. You see that he looks down towards Snoodle and he slowly pets him. Um, His eyes are darting this way and that. He is a king of Prismere, and he knows that he has been the reigning king for longer than any other king in Prismere ever has. And this could be the day. But he trusts you as his eyes dart back between each of you. Illig looks towards you and says, Join us at the table. We have political agreements to sign, yes? You have your scroll, Creme Le Creux? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) <laughs> and like this, <laughs> 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 this horrible shadowy portal the shadow fell opens up and a, a scroll will be presented and it'll turn <laughs> sideways <laughs> and it will <laughs> basically be a uh, kind of spooky um, drafted version of what we discussed last night <clears throat> a constitution Uh, Goblets are placed around the table. Uh, The king is given a goblet that is far um, more elaborate than the rest, gems encrusted in it. It looks like it was more than likely taken from his private uh, collection of treasures at some point down the line um, and and somehow found its way here as one of the bullywugs goes around behind each of you and fills up your goblets with more wine. All right, a toast then to ending the resistance, and to eventually new hope and downfall, should the agreements be to your liking, my king. And Illig raises his glass of wine. Shall we drink? It's awfully early in the morning. We just woke up. (laughs) Uh, I try not to drink before noon. It's just a personal philosophy. Would you disrespect me in my house, Creme Le Coeur? No, I I know I won't. (laughs) Then we shall drink. And he raises his goblet. (laughs) Door back up, swing check for grassy knoll. <laughs> and Illig uh, quickly knocks back his goblet of wine and motions for the goblets to be refilled. And you all begin to communicate. Uh, at first, the king seems very unnerved. But, um, and I guess the first thing I'll ask is, do you believe in the agreement that you've made with Illig for these plans for downfall? I hope so. Is this something that you, since you didn't RP them, is this something that you, as a group, are legitimately hoping the king will agree to and that this will be a path forward for downfall? Or are you trying to deceive the king? Why's everybody looking at me? I don't know how to speak for all y'all. No, I would say, I mean, Torbeck would believe everything Mr. Kremi said without without hesitation. He believes him, trusts him. And then he was off put by the, you know, we, we can get them all killed as political prisoners <laughs> thing. But but Torbeck is, Torbeck follows Mr. Kremi no matter what. I think Grico would have, I, I would have, like, thought about my political machinations and would, I would think that if it's, if it's basically the idea of they get to eat, eat their cake and have it too, of keep... Right. Not re- not do tons and tons of like cultural <laughs> revolution, but still have a thing that allows to establish not a brutal dictatorship. That would be great. I was like, well, it's the best we can do it in the time reasonable. we have. Yeah. yeah, it's all we it's all we got. And I would have cared uh, very when I wasn't playing humongous fungus <laughs> <laughs> with Twig. I would have invested much in the tax policy. I feel that that's really short up. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> I mean, Kremi definitely wants to have a useful political ally in one of the three realms of Prismere. Uh, and so he would want to install a king that doesn't get killed in, in two or three days mm-hmm. in case mm-hmm. for whatever reason he needs allies. And I think that he uh, he would have appointed um, oh, Glub Glub as the Lord of Ships 
ride <laughs> Glob Glob very handsomely uh, so that if they ever need a navy, they'll have some, something more than just the uh, V-Swan oh, boats. Yeah. <laughs> but what I would say, through your talks, you did devise with him a legitimate way to move forward that you believe would work. Oh, yeah. The no, no, no. I mean, the legitimate <laughs> elections for a prime minister, or there'd be some sort of parliament, you know, with whatever. Uh, I would like you, um, I would like you each to roll a, um, a, uh, check. Sweet. A persuasion check. Ooh, since we're not seen it, not that it matters uh, to me. Oh, oh boy. I'm gonna twist. <laughs> you haven't rolled it yet. I did. I'm gonna twist again. Torbeck! You got an 18, which I'll, is a I'll total of 90! I'm gonna roll a different d20. I haven't rolled one yet. I just wanna find the right one. Roll. Um, that's much better. Let's call that a 19. Torbeck's never been more charismatic or, or uh, persuasive. Let's roll the five. Roll plus zero. We, we all yes. twist. <laughs> twist. We all twist. <clears throat> Should I twist? I don't think Torbeck has one I more twisted. plus to charisma. I twisted twice. I think we're looking for oh, like 15. I got a 21. Nice. Well, I think you're going to be okay. I got a... Sorry. I lost my place again. Oh, uh, persuasion. Me. I got an 18. Uh, Gideon? 16. Oh. Child fellow. The there conversation takes three hours. There are lots of questions. And at first, the king is really uncomfortable. Um, but... Your presence there makes him feel comfortable. The, you start off the conversation explaining how you even got into this position. How Twig was held captive and through the course of communication and understanding what Illig's wants were and how they didn't align, uh, how, how they weren't far off from what the king wanted himself. Uh, you are able to get him to relax and become open to negotiation. And you're right in most regards. The king is not malleable. He puts his foot down on oh. some things. He will not be walked over because his end goal is the same, the betterment of downfall. I'm surprised you wanted to keep Prima Nocta. That's a fair. place <laughs> for the people to have a home and to have lives that have meaning and hope. And with the idea that someday Bavlorna would not rule over them the way that she does, this idea of a brighter future that they could build together with no more resistance and no more death is one that both of them seem to really enjoy. And though there is bickering and fighting and there are a few times where you have to keep the peace, after about three hours or so, you have come to an agreement on how things could and should work. And... A contract is signed. Two of the guards from the royal guard are let into the house to, to bear witness to the king's signature, and Illig's signature as well. And all of you are expected to sign Ooh, as no. witnesses and as creators of this doctrine, mm. of yeah. this peace treaty between the resistance and the crown. Ooh. Yeah, I provide the pen. Yes. I, I got a real nice one. Oh. And and it is nice. It is comfortable. And by midday, with all of the signatures provided with Kremi's pen, the king and Illig are escorted by guards both towards the castle to begin work on the changes that need to be made in Downfall. You are invited to join, but given the pressing nature of your meeting with Bavlorna, I would assume that you decline. Okay, Hoochie, get your paw right. Oh, isn't that so nice? Oh, no, that pen writes in your own blood. Oh, it's so <laughs> nice. It's brown, like owlbear. We have to sign it. Yeah. Uh, I feel all... like I would walk up like uh, John Hancock. Oh, there's not a whole lot of room to sign, so I should probably sign small for everybody else. Grico, grin, grin. <laughs> This is historic. I am proud to sign my name to this document and uh, uh, for a brighter future. Um, 
If we are just calling it a document or a contract or a constitution, that's fine. But I have an alternative name if you are both open to it, Billy. They would nod, yeah. The Frogna Croca. Jesus. That was awful, Frosty. <laughs> they seem to really you, like it and accept it. Oh, you're my best lad. <laughs> uh, I, oh, it's great. <laughs> and I signed. Well, I mean, I guess we're going to... I didn't know we were addressing isolationism. <laughs> well, I guess I, I already signed. All right, everybody sign with a pen. Oh, ah. And then we probably do decline, right? Yeah. With, with the signing... Um, there is a moment where um, an artist uh, from the castle uh, does a quick drawing of all of you around the table having signed um, <laughs> and uh, Illig and the king have found a comfortable a comfortable peace between them not a friendship but it does look like one could blossom as they leave together towards the castle to begin this new age of downfall. You are left in the House of the Resistance. It is completely empty, all but the six of you. And Hootsie. Oh, and and be careful for the the, the roving uh, toad murderer that's out there that isn't us. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, finally got a good alibi. Okay. Well, I can't believe we wrapped up that entire decades-long political conflict in about a three-hour musical extravaganza that pays homage to the classic while, you know, doing a little bit of, uh, you know, new new uh, bops for the kids. I still have a little soup and bread left. Oh, wow. That's, that was shockingly uh, effective. Do you think your snail's okay? Uh, your snail is tied up outside and, oh. and very well tended. <laughs> snail number two! Oh, I missed you. Hoochie missed you very Wipe much. Up the gob of <laughs> I can't believe that worked. I mean, we really put in a lot of work. You know how much fucking food I cooked? <laughs> to make all that happen? And obviously, you wrote a whole opera in like 15 minutes. So that's pretty impressive, too. And 12 hours of political debate is all it really took. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. It's not like it was effortless, Grico. Yeah. Still, though, I mean, that worked out. Like, usually when we try things, things go south real quick. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, just everything goes wrong. And that was, like, shockingly effective. Yeah, and usually it's small stuff. And here we are, just a couple of strangers rolled into a kingdom and fixed all its political problems in, like, 12 hours. <laughs> I can't possibly go wrong. <laughs> You're right, Gideon. That's staying the logic. It can't go wrong at all. Indeed. Well, based on the nature of the contract, I mean, uh, what was it called? The Frogna... The Frogna flying, Croca. The Frogna Croca. Mm -hmm. and the blood that it was signed in, the pen that was used, I think that might be a little chemical X in the equation, but uh, we'll see what happens. I feel I feel secure in our decision because of the horrible magics uh, involved. Torbeck is optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> and Uncle Globo said I would never use my degree for anything. <laughs> uh, go to show you, Uncle Globo. You know, Rico, I, I, I will admit, having an educated point of view at the table really made a big difference. Yeah, well, that was it. That's the last time <laughs> I'll, I'll be relevantly useful. I guess the bit has run its course. Yeah, That's I think fine. so. I think so. <laughs> I can't. I can't imagine the other two uh, parts of Prismia are as politically minded as this one. As I'm like digging my finger into my ear. <laughs> well, we haven't had our actual vote. Oh, come oh, on! We were interrupted by <laughs> the Stephen Dookie or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. What were we gonna vote about? That, li that brown liquid we drank this morning. Remember? Whether we're going to kill a hag or we're going to attempt to sneak. Oh. Well, I, I don't even necessarily mean sneak. I mean, like, maybe you say, hey, can we get, I don't know, that thing over there? <laughs> yeah, sure. Mm. <laughs> That's a we take surprisingly it away. good impression, Grimmy. That was really good. Well, I mean, you know, Where did we leave advice? off the vote? Well, I, I came to a decision before, you know, right as the bugle started playing. But Hootsie can have a vote, but she'll be the tiebreaker. How does that sound? Oh. We may not need a tiebreaker. 
Hootsie. I think that is just fine. What do you think? I'm glad you agree. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's your flop pad. <laughs> it is at this time that you hear a thump, 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 thump. It comes at random intervals, and it takes a moment for you to realize that it's coming from the wooden stairs. As you all turn your heads, you see a crystal orb rolling down the stairs. And with every hit of the stairs, thump, 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 thump. And it rolls across the floor and softly hits against your foot, Kremi, and then bounces backwards. As you look down at it, it's beautiful. Looking into it, you can see the light refracting through it and casting an array of rainbows out across the floor. What the fuck? Hello? Hey guys, what's this? It's a ball! Oh yeah, no, I wouldn't even hesitate. I'd be like, hey, what's this? He's a Tarbuck. They're maybe dangerous. Yeah, Tarbuck will pick it up. You pick it up and you feel you feel the orb, what feels like a, a glass or a gemstone for just a second before it becomes malleable and then pops like a bubble. And you watch as the little tiny bubbles burst forward from it and spread out all around you. And then you hear a voice fill the room. I was unsure of whether you would fight or whether you would try to do, take the political route. I'm glad to know you're smarter than you look. So your king has a present for you. Drink this glass of wine when you need it the most. Bottle of wine when you need it the most. There's a glass for each of you. But remember, once it's uncorked, it expires in 24 hours, so use it wisely, my lads. I'll be watching you. And you feel something up against your foot, Kremi, where that orb had been. There is now... A, there is now a bottle of wine, a label on it that is ornate and shimmers in the light. It is topped with a chess piece, which is a king. King of Hearts Royal Reserve. Whimsy wine. Mm. Oh, As you knows. hold this, you can feel the magic in this wine. You can feel the way the magic thrums through the glass. And you guys don't, we don't really deal with um, identification. So for all yeah. intents and purposes, uh, the label on the back tells you it's got uh, 974 energy, Ks of energy. Oh. Um, no, I'm kidding. I just want to says on the candy. That's a lot of cattle. The label's um, coming off. It just says Charles Shaw underneath. What, what you see is that there is clearly enough for five cups, five glasses of wine. Oh, one for each of you. Once opened, the liquid inside will expire within 24 hours. One glass of wine does a few things for you. You get plus five to all persuasion checks, Ooh. deception checks, and insight checks for 24 hours. Ooh. Once a day, you have the ability to erase the mind by 10 minutes and redo what you've done by simply blowing a bubble in the person's face. What? So basically you drink the wine and you can blow bubbles. If you blow a bubble into somebody's face and it pops, you can, it's the effect of like the mind blank spell, but it erases, uh, it erases 10 minutes of their memory. We're going to redo. So you could potentially fuck something up and redo the past 10 we minutes. Each get that? After we drink the wine, but we did it for four period. You Twenty five you uses of it. Oh. Twenty five uses. It's five bottles of wine. No, it's one, one bottle, bottle of wine, wine with five, five cups. cups in it. Oh. <laughs> we each get one drink. Oh no! Oh, he's still drunk. From, from he's the seen, benefits of he's it. seeing fives. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I had I had too much steaming Duke. <laughs> Torres gonna be at the bar and be like, hey. Did you know this song was in Tony Hawk Pro Skater? <laughs> <laughs> Let me try that again. <laughs> 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 
that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very powerful uh, magical artifact. I mean, this is a this is a vintage. Look at this. This is some good stuff. You gotta keep this safe. I don't know where to keep it. I have my backpack. No, I don't even know what's in there. Backpack, 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 backpack. Back. Do I have a bag of holding? Do I have a bag of holding? No? Yeah, you guys do. Oh, I'll just put it in the bag of holding. <laughs> Wait, you have a bag of holding? Here it goes. It immediately explodes. And uh, <laughs> why am I carrying 175 pounds of backpack if you have a bag of fucking holding for Because me? you you read uh, about tabaxi and Vogel's got the monster. <laughs> and you can't fucking drop it, Frost. All right? You won't fucking give it up. Give it a game, Grammy. I mean, I don't know. You like your stuff. <laughs> I, I throw away a bell. <laughs> oh, I mean, what, I don't know what any of that is. Uh, <clears throat> I need you guys to roll a d12. All of us? Or oh, all of us? Yeah, because uh, like you said, the wine lasts for 24 hours. I've given you a break. but general body horror? 11. 11? Oh, uh, I need 11. you each to roll a d6. Oh, that was just whoever got to it first. Six. Five. Okay. One. Four. Two. Okay. Perfect. Six. Yeah. Wow. Um, your voice immediately changes. <laughs> you now speak with a German accent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't back and do this. <laughs> uh, Greco, what did you get? Five. Uh, your voice changes. You now speak with a Scottish accent. <laughs> <laughs> Your voice changes. You now speak with a valley girl or surfer accent. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Crummy? Two. Uh, you now speak with an Eastern European accent. And and Gideon? <laughs> Take it easy. Yeah, four. Uh, you now speak with an Irish accent. Oh, 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 oh potato. Oh, no, you don't say. Top of the morning. Crimmy, you can't just say that somebody read Folo's Guide to <laughs> Monsters and then, like, assume that that's the only reason why they kept a character decision like that. All right? Let's, like, gag me with a spoon, okay? <laughs> uh, uh, this does make me gag me with a spoon, but just the character choice to do that is I'm holding it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, haggis. Wolski. There we go. This is sort of kind of. No, you're no, doing that's it. More again. sort of just your near, but yeah. kind of like this. It's really hard. Do poros. How about oh. we? How there about we? we try. Is, thank you for the skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> This is easy! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Torbat has to talk like Lufty. I have to work on talking uh, like Lufty. You have to go to Germany and listen to some craft. Bro. Yeah! Oh, we been! We cool! You just have to be Mama the, and Brigitte. Yeah, Mama and Brigitte. The red cool! <laughs> is this Which cow you speak of? We, we chase! <laughs> Are we the same person? You are the same person. Oh, You're yeah. just speaking with Tor a different voice. Torbeck still can't say anything other than Torbeck. <laughs> Why does everyone sound so diff? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Why does my vocabulary change all of a sudden? It's just the way that we're talking and expressing ourselves, okay? It is drugs? <laughs> I think it might be the wine. Like, it's got like lingering waves, you know? I don't know, I'm going back and forth now. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, it's good. The, we still need to vote. Yes? Oh, I should probably vote. Vote, yeah. <laughs> Can the rest of you speak? <laughs> Gideon, what would you like for, for breakfast in the morning? Oh, top of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for that. That's all I got. That's oh, you're really 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 a wee really little shake. That's the only really thing I can see in Irish. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> It was oh, well, bad. Thank you. Uh, yeah. What are we voting on? <laughs> I think Gideon's gonna start talking about his charms. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't you be coming after me like your charms. <laughs> Why would you even bring it up, Frosty? No, no. What would you be doing with your charms? Time, don't you even <laughs> what talk would you about be doing with your charms? 
Oh, gosh. I can't even write Why do you after my, my lucky charms? No, don't. Why are you after my lucky ah, charms? Haggis. <laughs> Saw the bread. Only 24 <laughs> meters. <laughs> we don't have to talk to them, okay? We don't have to talk to them. All we have to do uh, is just put our hands and our thumbs up in one direction or down, okay? So do we not kill Hag and just steal or perhaps not steal? I just don't even know if it's possible, all right? Raise hand. Oh, raise hand for what? Which, which one? You said them both. I mean, this, I is, this is the not kill option. I don't know what you're trying to do. Do we... Do we shoot to kill or do we negotiate? This is what I ask. Kill to shoot? I think we bury her out back like a filthy fucking charm thief. <laughs> Of course you would say that. Of course. <laughs> so giddy, okay? Yeah. <laughs> no. This sounds fun. I could be convinced. No, hold on. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> boomers. Hey, boomers. Hey, boomers. Hey, boomers. Do you get that reference? <laughs> Nobody gets it. I got it. Uh, now, if we're half and half, can we do a? You know, with a coup. It is one vote or another vote. There is no middle option. Do we fight and kill, or do we talk and barter and steal? I propose we barter steal, because if we get if we get away with it, we don't have to kill anyone. If not, then we fight. Okay. Yeah, we did all this work to. <laughs> <laughs> on top of the mine, and we did all this work. You just need to unlock it for a second. I don't know what the fuck I was doing there. Uh, but uh, we did all of this work uh, to, to start a democratic, whatever the hell you called it here. I and now you want to you want to go up and leave the hag, and, and she's just gonna come in and fuck everything up, put everyone under spells, and and run everything. Not even from the shadows. Ooh, that's the fine. Front. Ooh, that's fine. Why don't we just fucking kill her? I don't get it. I think I agree. <laughs> I want to know what this is so bad. Oh, where are all be folks? <laughs> oh, I don't read the game. Where oil, where are beef oil hooked? Where and what? Where oil be fucked? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Where oil be fucked? That is so funny. I choose the better. What? Break out. Murder. Is this the official count? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> How's the poor mine? I don't say we go straight for murder. That's the. That's what you're asking me to vote on? Why? I cannot. Becky, look at my Did we shake legs. you? Break out. I don't even want to look at you. Where's me scotch? I don't even want to look at you right now, okay? Twig! What is it that you I need think and okay. vote with? Hold on. Twig's had wine. I, I don't like <laughs> these curses today. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go back to the old ones? <laughs> Oil be fucked. Um, I'm not Oil sure. Be I don't really know if we should kill him or not. It's really hard to try. Oh, to he's just how we going back. I'm trying to do twig in an, in an English accent. It doesn't back work. Back to jingle jangle. <laughs> so, oh, man. God. Please go back to New Jersey. I really uh, hope I don't. This good so far. What do you think? I don't think we should kill anybody. Thank you. You're oh. my best friend. Okay. This is one vote. I had to. Uh, I'm not. I'm voting down. No, this you've been two. saying that Twigsy's vote doesn't count the whole time. No, well, that sounds crazy. To six me. votes plus Hootsie is tiebreaker for seven. Well, I say we kill the bitch. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Tor Torbeck does not want. Z- 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 fuck! I can't do this while you guys are all doing your reaction. <laughs> I want to do 
you Russian it's so long. bad that I can't it's, say it's, it's German. why I tell, told Kelsey all the time in, in yeah. uh, so yeah. midnight to just shut up. Yeah. The difficult <laughs> <not> fancy <laughs> murder. The yeah. difficulty is yeah. when I'm playing yeah. Rico but talking differently, it, it fries my right. brain. I can't, I can't do the I need to have a character no that eyes. has the accent yeah. or yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm completely Or I can't do it. It's impossible for me to not use I like when I'm trying to do a different accent, it's like yeah. nuts. I can't yeah. do it. I need to build a character that has the accent. Yeah. But without speaking, maybe do this to kill and this to not kill. <laughs> yeah. Kill. Yeah. Yes, I'll kill, Tarbag. Uh, I think we may kill. It's got to be. I think we met there. <laughs> this, this is Ty. This is Ty. <laughs> it is up to you, chosen one. <laughs> Wee hootsie. Hootsie, rap, why choose violence today? Okay? Just the like, don't even choose it. Have just come together just for be this cool, decision. Hootsie. Just like, come over here and like, chill, and we're all gonna have like, a great time, and then I'll give you a treat. Okay? Hootsie will blank. I feel we got a rule for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask how you were gonna solve it. How you gonna oh, solve it? A, a coin. A coin. All right, what is head? What is head? <laughs> what is head? <laughs> Fly pad, flip a coin. No! You have my payment information! No! This e-books! Oh! I'm fucked! Uh, we're gonna... So, one will be peace and two will be murder. Ooh. One, one is peace. Well, you're supposed to catch it. Oh, well... Well, and that's how we decided to do it! That was it. Peace. You Wait, gotta try for peace. I'm cool with this. How does Hootsie... Like, say that. She'll look up. Mm. Roll for her accent. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Wait, what do we have? Uh, D6. 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 Three. Hootsie gets yeah. French and just goes, that is no way. <laughs> She's <laughs> English French. slash British. Oh. She just break up. She sounds like you're dead. <laughs> it's, it's appropriate. Well, I think, I think it would be sad to murder in it. I like for peace. <laughs> let us let us all fight for peace. See, see, I always knew you were cool. That is so cool. It is written. <clears throat> a big gong playing somewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a Neil Peart drum solo yeah. as we walk out. Where is that coming from? <laughs> <laughs> And just as quickly as the gong plays, you feel your tongues lighten and your voices return to normal. Uh, However, I'm just saying that if we have to, like, I don't even want to think about killing that girl. Like, I, that hag. I just, it just gagged me with a spoon. <laughs> it doesn't gag me with a spoon. It came out the same way. Wow. <laughs> However, you all feel pain on your body. And as you move this way or that, your clothes rub up against your skin and ah, oh, it's just irritating. And as you roll up your sleeves, you realize that you all have a horrible sunburn and you find no relief. Oh, does anyone else feel that fucking, uh, fucking sunburn? Oh, we are. I didn't, uh, how did either of us get a sunburn? I don't know, man. I didn't even know I could be burned. Ah. Let, oh, let's get oh. on to snail number two. No, it, it'll move too fast. It'll hurt. Snail number two. Uh, Better than walking. Does anyone have aloe? Yeah, please apply aloe to Torbeck. You have to get under all the folds and fur <laughs> quickly. I would do it, but uh, the front of my hands are somehow sunburned too. I can see the peeling already happening. Oh, how did Torbeck's eyelids get sunburned? <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, oh, gosh, this is the worst day we've ever had. <laughs> this is my nightmare. <laughs> ah. I have to get worse. Hold on. We're in the swamp. This, how does this happen? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Okay, snail number two. <laughs> and the problem is that in this moment, though you have these horrible sunburns and you can find no relief, you feel the need to dance. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. 
Should pop this, right? Oh, 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 I'm gonna dance on down to the swamp. It'll follow you. <laughs> and that happens for about 30 minutes, where you are dancing and covered in sunburns, but eventually it starts to wear off, and you feel like the wine that you had drank the night before has fully started to wear off. The wine you drank this morning, however, oh, is still firmly in your system. Uh, it's all so physical today. Oh. Mm. oh. Well, before the next wave of wine kicks in, are we, are we and comfortable? it starts to. Oh. As your ears become incredibly large and everything is very, very loud. <laughs> Don't worry, you're almost out of them. I can still hear you have the, one final one that I can still I'm hear the trumpets of the king and the. the ah! <laughs> ah! 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 Shut up! Here he goes. Stop oh, shouting! Yeah. Oh, shut up! I'll talk. I'll talk very quietly. <laughs> Just very quiet now. Dad, black stage whisper though, because we're still we're still talking in the microphone. Dad, black wine. Stage stage whisper. I can do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Just. Uh, just stop screaming at the top of your lungs. Stop man. fishing. Oh, but it hurts. I don't know how to do it but scream. Ah. Everyone just be fine. Just be cool. It's fine. Ah. I step on a twig. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Twig screams as you step on her. And oh no. Like, Dude, I'm just oh, oh. Oh. oh god. How much did we have to drink last night? Oh god. God. Twig, your bones snap really loudly. Are you okay? <laughs> a compound fracture? I don't think I'm ever going to be okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Torbeck begins to scream and rip out chunks of fur to try to stuff in his ears. <laughs> Doesn't anybody know it's uh, silence? Yeah, I'll just throw that there. <laughs> we have to be quiet. Oh, oh. Very quiet. Rico, shut the fuck up. Oh, uh, what? Stop screaming. <laughs> ah, ah, it hurts. Oh, Twig, you look like you're in the end of no country for old men. <laughs> Are you sure you're okay? Or is it going to be ambiguous whether you make it or not? I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that means. Oh. 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 Torbeck's fur isn't really helping all that great. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Alright, let's let, let's get on the snail. Alright, and the snail goes real slow, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 the snail yeah. the snail won't be yeah. right. we won't make it a, a single sound. Okay, the snail, yeah, right. the snail snails don't make two. any sounds. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> It is a loud, <sighs> slurping, juicy, <laughs> sliding noise as the snail just slides across the ground. Uh, <sighs> there, are occasion, there are occasions where there's clearly something stuck to the bottom of the snail as it scrapes over slate rocks and it's like nails on the chalkboard as it just grinds and slides. And it's horrible. And it, it's this way for a good 20 minutes before mm. you your ears return to normal and you can hear just fine. <sighs> All right, oh, we had to get that boat back like two days ago. Let's uh, let's hope it doesn't charge, charge us a late fee. You know what I mean? <laughs> Torvik's starting to understand Mr. Crummy's rule about not drinking before noon. <laughs> yeah, me yeah, yeah. too. Oh god, at least n- nothing with drugs in it. All right. <laughs> okay, get in. Stop having. Wait, fellas. you're going. Oh. You're going back the other way to the boat to go where? I, I actually don't know physically where we've been heading. I've just been <laughs> in a nightmare of hell. We gotta get the guy's boat back, don't we? <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, oh God. We got other things to do. Well, we have to, we're meet, if we're meeting Babylon at night, we got, I guess, I don't know. We oh, don't have time, do we? Did, 
Like you guys might want to figure out what your plan is. Where, now. where are we right now? So you had been. Do you have your map? Because no. I don't have the map anymore. No, but the, the two maps were on top of your thing. I know that they. Were no, there. they weren't. They weren't. I swear that they were there. They weren't. I promise. I I understand what you're saying. <laughs> and I am telling you that I they so were. I understand the words. You're I do understand you just what you are saying. But no, that is not the truth. Okay. Uh, I will find the map in here of Hither itself. Okay. So, well, that's Hither. I need Downfall specifically. Map of Downfall. I think our fingernails are going to reverse next. This (laughs) is where you, this is the palace. This is where you had left the boat. This is where you met the King of Hearts. Yep. This is the Mushroom, is the mushroom Forest. forest yep. You had headed this way. This is where you killed Vlonk. This is the house you were oh. currently in. And this was the tower where you were supposed to take the line up to Bevlar. Oh, we don't Bevlar do that. We don't <laughs> so, you had Not gone outside and traveled all the way up here to the boat? Oh. No. No, no, we don't. I assumed we were finishing the, circu- the, the clockwise radiation. You started here. <laughs> it's pronounced shitter is what you have done. So you are at the very <laughs> end of where you came in. Okay, can we be there? No, no, you said you've gone no, no, back no, no, here. No, 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 we don't go there. We, we turned around? We, we go to, we go to that, where, wherever so we you, feel like we're going to go up, up to the top. So you come outside and you take the snail all the way back no, here and just retrace your no, steps. No, no, we don't. We go the other way. We go we go northwest. We just say, fuck that, guys. You go here to this. We go northeast. <laughs> you go, we go here and there? Yes. Yeah. We say, fuck that God's boat. So what are you, what are your plans? I'm assuming you're going to make plans on the way, because you know that the invitation that you'd had was giving you a ride up to Bavlarna's cottage at that particular time. You no longer meet those time requirements. Sure. So uh. I'm assuming as you ride the snail to this tower that you will plan? We're morphing faster than uh, Akira right now. There's no way for us to make any plans. <laughs> <laughs> Our bodies are changing so graphically. It's a <laughs> uh, <laughs> my, 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 they grow mouths and teeth. Uh, <laughs> I'm just like covered in I'm covered in scar <laughs> tissue. I'm like I uncrossed my mouth has been like sealed shut. <laughs> I think we should call for another bug. Another bug? Yeah, the bug would gave the letter if we yank on the cord hard enough. Oh. It might come down and we could say, hey, could we hang out later tonight? You know what I mean? Or we get no the pressure. attention of Bavlorna and she sends down a bomb. <laughs> Does she have those? I don't know what she has. Surely there must be some way to communicate. I want to look over to the other side of the swamp. Could I see the, the big storm cloud balloon? Hmm? It's still there? Yep. No. I guess the false flag either didn't work or it hasn't happened yet. Maybe we need to let him know. Oh. That's good, I think. Do we just want to yank on the cold and see what happens? Well, we know that we... I mean, I think we impressed her with the plate. And I think that your whole ruse about, you know... Scabbard. Put it on a sister she probably liked. So I think we, uh, you know, I think we just talk to her. She See, dislikes her sisters. We know this. Yes. Yeah. We know she doesn't like her sisters, and we know that she can return something that was lost to us. We, we tell her that we lost time, that we were projected forward in time, and that we very much disliked losing time to the oh. future. Yes? That's a good idea. That, 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 that we prefer to stay in the present. Oh, should we find that Seda what was in the cage? I mean, who knows where the hell that guy is. We haven't even heard an inkling about what this fucking guy is. Yeah, I just feel like a lot of our visions have come true. <laughs> not all. I mean, not, not most of them, right? I mean, the king of the bully jugs. I mean, yeah, that was one. And the heads on the pikes. That was two. And what else? Did it all related to Downfall, didn't it? Well, didn't the King of Hearts one maybe be just wrong? Nah. Oh, man. I can't remember. <laughs> There's a satyr somewhere, and he's very <laughs> sad in the cage. Maybe I'll that's bet he's meta- in the hut. Maybe that's metaphorical. Maybe the satyr is like the king's soul. 
and he feels trapped by tradition uh, and obligation. Or we're all the same, or bogged <laughs> down by the society that we live in. That's right, and consumerism is a gilded cage that makes <laughs> us feel good about ourselves, but really deep down we're trapped just like the rest of them. Oh, when Smash cut to the cage. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> 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 There. Please, I'm very and, hungry. <laughs> and wait, if that was true, then that means that the lives that others project is actually more of a mask than the true sorrow and struggles that they deal with, and it's only what they choose to present to others. Living a glamorous and perfect lifestyle. Whoa. I'm gonna yank the I'm gonna yank the thing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, does, it, does anyone have any objections? We're not gonna kill her. We agreed. No, we no, voted. we're gonna talk to him. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna see we're gonna see what see what kind of deal she wants to cut us. Agreed. Let's just have a conversation. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. We just get a we get a bug and say, "Hey, bug, c- c- let's let's get dinner." And we all feel very confident that the wine is out of our system. So I'll just go ahead and yank it now. Okay, Frosty. Great. So you are you are making your way to the pla- to the tower. Yes. Uh, to, to the platform where we know that there's the connection to the yeah and I, I, to nor, the central northwest I believe northwest is, mm-hmm. is the direction that we're headed. A <laughs> ten foot high raised wooden platform stands atop a mound of mossy earth and mud. Two bullywugs lays at their guard post atop the platform, occasionally peering through a long spyglass mounted on a swivel. Oh, a frayed clothesline attached to one corner of the watchtower is festooned with patchwork garments. The line stretches out towards the nearby lake before disappearing up and into the fog. Officer, officer. Hello there. <clears throat> we certainly on high. <laughs> all hung over. No, not Hello. at all. Hello. Welcome to the Watchtower. I'm Watchtower Wendell, and this watch is Watchtower Willie. Uh, <laughs> Willie? Uh, Wendell. Wendell, Watchtower. Yes. I got a double you for you. Get a warrant, knock. <laughs> oh, well. We're, we're good. Torbeck's name is Torbeck. Sometimes good Rebel and you. other good. times, what's that smell? Good to meet you. What is that smell? That's it's horrible. It's Torbeck. Oh, well, you should bottle it up and sell it. Oh, uh, it is a Brownie? scent unlike any oh. I've ever smelled in my entire life. Oh, oh, de toilette. New enterprise. <laughs> de Tobek. Oh, I thought it was Tobek. Why would it be a joke? With, hey, what he means is that it would be like a prank gift that you would be able to give to someone to horrify them, and they probably actually make a lot of money. Though. One of those jelly beans that taste like piss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, tastes, it tastes like puke or barf. Or, uh, why, wait, why do those exist? I don't know. Uh, for facilities? For funsies? So, yeah. Willie and Wendell, how are you doing today? Oh, well, we're doing just fine. Just looking out of a downfall, making sure everything is going <laughs> as it should. You see anything cool out of that spyglass? Not really. Oh. Any, it's like, quite boring. Any serial killers, like the cutting throats of kings or nothing? Yeah, surely you've no. a few more. Oh, we did see something interesting today. <laughs> the king in a procession with resistance. Oh, yes, we helped mediate that. We were We good don't ombudsman. expect him to be long for this world. No, no, May no. he rest in peace. No, 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 no. no, no, no. They, no they, that's right. they signed the Constitution. They're agreed. They're lined now. You are the ones that got the king killed. Are you to be the new gentry? No, no, no. No, no, we got yet. the king's mount killed. Not the <laughs> no, king no. killed. Oh, they killed the up. king's they, mount they first. Been, No, we Ooh. did. We, we, ki- we oh. killed the king's mount. You We're killed the We the killed it. No, not the king. Die. The king isn't dead, and the king is not going to die. Well, he was walking with the resistance. Yes, so. yes, because they are, uh, they're aligned now. There, there is sure. no resistance. There's just... <laughs> Whatever the opposite of resistance is, you know what I'm saying, fellas? Silly Kitty. <laughs> oh, that was pretty uh, good. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's the the final stage of grief. Grief? Grief. 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 <laughs> grief. Yeah, oh, grief. You keep, you keep saying grief. It sounds like. <laughs> Do I keep saying grief? It sounds like yeah. grief. I'm saying grief. No, I'm not saying grief. I'm saying grief. Torment here's grease. <laughs> it's the, I mean, you're saying the same word. I'm saying no. I'm not saying grief. I'm saying grief. Yeah, you're saying grief. Couldn't you grief. hear the trumpets? <laughs> 
Yes, we and heard the trumpets. That's like, what alerted us to what they were doing and it, over and there. It did that melody, and that's how we saw the procession. It was like. <laughs> they were doing that. That means that the king is not going to be murdered. It's, it, it, that is obviously a very cheerful sign of uh, alignment and allies and, and happiness. That's not even how the trumpet sounded. It was much more like. <laughs> and then they all started to walk forward, but he oh. says it in his accent. <laughs> oh, both, both of those tunes means friends. <laughs> I'm not sure that's what that means. It you means silly, friends. You uh, silly kitty cat. Uh, I am a silly cat. Frosty, I don't think that medieval styled uh, herald trumpets have that sort of range. Am I allowed to say silly puss on Twitch? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Silly puss. <laughs> Just one more time. Silly puss. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, we're trying to yank on the cord, if you know what I mean, <laughs> Willie. <laughs> I'm not yanking I'm not I'm not yanking your Wendell, Willie. <laughs> I'm yanking your Willie Wendell. Easy, we're easy. trying to yank that Which Willie Wendell one of us are you talking to? Wendell or Willie? See that wobbling cord? We're trying to yank on the wobble. <laughs> yeah, we're not yanking Why your chain. Why on earth would yank, you but... want to yank on the wobble? Stop! <laughs> stop! Torbeck is feeling things! <laughs> <laughs> we are trying to hang out with a bug. <laughs> <laughs> to say it. Well, that's fine. Oh, Jeremy, yeah. the uh, cicada, is just hanging around the... Jeremy, you hey, have... Fuck you guys! <laughs> fuck you guys! Fuck you guys! Fuck you guys! hell! I don't think Jeremy wants guests today. <laughs> oh, that was... Hey, Jeremy, you remember us? That was aggressive. I remember your fucking ugly face in it. <laughs> side of their own shed exoskeleton. <laughs> yeah, my wife left me. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Jeremy. Uh, you know, we, we were just talking about the acceptance is the, is the final stage of, uh, of, of grieving. Accept this! <laughs> <laughs> Why do you play a jaunty tune on your fiddle? <laughs> I fucking hate that thing. <laughs> oh, my favorite film. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> it's like the Green Ranger's dagger. <laughs> so he plays it, and it plays a mini version of a trumpet. <laughs> oh, I'm a medieval. Yeah, I'm a medieval. Yeah, I'm a mini version. <laughs> this guy, Jeremy. Really seems to be going through some stuff. <laughs> He's yes. embarrassed. Yeah, but that's not our problem, Torbeck. Anyway. Uh, I feel like we need well, to go on a whole side story to help out Jeremy and I won't get his groove back. Well, uh, it looks like you've had your meeting with a bug. No, no, there's another oh. bug that lives up there. Basically, Are you talking we... about Bug Lorna? Oh, the bug has a name. Bug, bug Lorna? Yeah, that's exactly who we're talking about. Oh. Wendell, be serious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that line leads to Bad Lorna's home, correct? Yes. We want to yank on it to get her attention so that she might send us a message or we might communicate. <laughs> Why don't you just ride the line up to her house and knock on the door? Uh, well, that's what we're with trying to do right silly now. Bastard. All right. Is there a gondola? Is there a gondola right now? <laughs> Didn't you say so? And he goes over to the corner and he begins to pull on a rope and you see this very large bucket. Oh my God. Um, with a, uh, a hatch door that opens up and both him and Willie um, fumble with the bucket for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, Wendell, yank this. And they oh, attach- Together, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> Fumble bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the last time I played Fumble Bucket. Uh, I missed the bucket. <laughs> oh, <it's a> bucket. <laughs> All right. Continue, Willie and, w- and Wendell. Willie and Wendell. Uh, 
play fum- fumble bucket and they uh, attach the bucket oh. to the line. <laughs> Just in broad daylight, too. Oh, riding the fumble bucket in broad daylight. Oh, oh, man. Yeah. Oh. God. The rest of the gang is like it's it's like the, like from one person's face next to all Corinna saying making these horrible faces, and then he gets the turban and he's like, <laughs> I'm covering Hootsie's eyes. You see that Greco fumble bucket? That was adventurous. <laughs> uh, but they place a bucket uh, to the line and. Well, if you just if you want to go see Bug Lorna and just simply get into the bucket and ride it on up. Uh, oh, have you seen a satyr in a cage? No. He's really stuck on me. Have you seen a metaphorical satyr in a metaphorical cage? No. Can you see a metaphor? No. Can you look through your spyglass for Greco and see if you find a satyr trapped in a cage right now? Or like sure. a Jack the Ripper stabby guy. He looks through and spins it around, looking mm. all about. No satyr? What about you, Willie? <laughs> <laughs> Willie looks and finds nothing. Is that satisfactory? I suppose. Would you like to look in my spyglass? <laughs> oh, no. No, I mean, I've never looked through a big spyglass. It's the By one so means, big. I've never handled oh. such a big spyglass. Okay. <laughs> Only two hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's a two-hander. <laughs> oh, wow, I can barely get my hands around it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll take me out. Be careful, Greco, don't drop it. Yeah. Uh, roll, a, uh, roll a perception check. Oh, At advantage, because you were using spyglass. Not great. You see a satyr in a cage, water world style, just sinking into a pool of clay. You, you see a satyr in a cage, but it's not the type of cage 18. you would expect. You're looking, it looks you like you're at the time. Renaissance Fair. Oh. And... No! We should tell that story again. He's dancing for the enjoyment of all. Oh, God. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, I see a cage! Oh, there's there's hair in it! Oh, it's a satyr! <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> what's wrong, Gregor? Oh! Oh! <laughs> Tell us what's happening. Oh, Describe the scene. It, it, oh, oh, it's in pain. Uh, <laughs> I'm no. enjoying it. It looks like, it sounds like you're being murdered. Oh, I mean, I don't want to yuck anyone's yum, but oh! Oh, oh man, okay, oh, oh, look, oh, look, oh. I'm, I'm looking away now. <laughs> is, it, is it over? Is it ever over, Frosty? Did you did you find the satyr? I don't know what I found. <laughs> I'm not, neither do we. That's why we're asking. <laughs> Perhaps a tale for another day. <laughs> there are no gods here. <laughs> I believe that the satyr was a metaphor. Mm-hmm. The cage representing our <laughs> endless desire for more beyond our means. <laughs> the horns representing the weight of our avarice. <laughs> Straining our necks mm-hmm. with the endless hunger for that what others have. Until right. we receive it, it turns to ash in our mouths. <laughs> And the, and the goat le- the, the goat legs. <laughs> Those are just goat legs. <laughs> There's nothing metaphorical yeah, it's, it's about that. Disappointing. Them. Everything uh, else was so poetic. <laughs> yeah, it's just goat legs. I think just you know that's kind of cool. Goat legs. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> sure, a goat. Not like pig or cow or deer. <laughs> the influence that Satan <sighs> has on our civilization. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Satan? He was that uh, bartender that we enjoyed. Back in oh, Satan? Yeah. If there were gods, they are dead and we have killed them. <laughs> <laughs> For our own hubris, we have reached for the, the zenith of Olympus. And upon wax wings, we crash into the sea of. Misery and self destruction <laughs> swallowed by the Leviathans of 
shame and self-loathing. Well, that's some beautiful poetry there. <laughs> Willie, shut up! A single blood tear <laughs> pours from Grico's eye. <laughs> or, oh, it just meant that, oh, there's a silly little fairy guy that we gotta find. <laughs> you never know. You never know. One or the other. Anyway, thanks for calling the bucket. We're gonna go talk to Bug Luna. All right. Well, I hope you have a great time. Well, All right. Make sure you don't go too quickly or you'll fray the line and drop to your doom. So, oh, how do we drive this thing? Well, you just pull on the rope. Oh. Manual. I hope you have a lot of arm strength. And we have Gideon. We have, we have a Gideon. <clears throat> Yeah, I can work you look like you're very warm. Well, this is probably the sunburn combined with me being made of fire, partly. <laughs> Don't uh, you worry that you will burn the rope with your fire hands? Well, I didn't worry about that, but now that you've alluded <laughs> to it, it's making me kind of worried. His that touch isn't that hot. It doesn't hurt. I oh, would, yeah, I can Would you like it. me to touch you and confirm? Not in a sexual way. <laughs> oh, <laughs> could I interest you in a game of fumble? <laughs> It's not in a sexual way, don't bother. Uh, well, if you I mean, insist. Sure, t- touch my palms or something. Tell me. He lightly like. touches your. Oh, you are quite spicy. Oh, thank you. I don't think you're warm enough to burn the rope, though. Oh, perfect. Uh, Torbeck next. The funny thing about Torbeck's palms is they're on his butt cheeks. Oh, all right. And he reaches down, he touches. Quite, oh. quite slimy for a furry fellow. Oh, slimy. Oh. Have you ever heard the myth that when you masturbate, your hands your palms get furry. I have heard that once or twice. <laughs> because then I look at Torbeck. It was allegedly <laughs> in public. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> Torbeck was never convicted. <laughs> oh, How many times do we have to go over this? Oh. Oh, they had a hung jury. <laughs> and they was right after they saw the evidence. <laughs> it was exhibit A three Z. We get in the fucking bucket. <laughs> it is a fucking bucket, and you get into it, and you begin to you begin to pull your way up. It is difficult. You are carrying the weight of all of your friends. And this and this rope is long and thick <laughs> and frayed and hairy with the threads of the rope. <laughs> As you grip it and tug, one tug after the next. It's kind of familiar. You pull your friends to the tip. Just hand over hand, Gideon. I'm a lot of bit gross. I haven't had to use two hands in a while. Ouch. <laughs> Make sure you don't get rope burned. Careful. Quit squirming. They're slipping the, they're slipping the, the easy, fumble Easy, bucket. easy, easy. Just chill. Oh, Why relax? I'm just taking the view. Thanks, Gary. I really appreciate it. Don't yeah. let go. Well, if don't a gross bug comes, say hello. I love the gross bugs. And eventually, 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 adventurers. Eventually, you are able to make your way up mm-hmm. through the fog, and you find yourself on a floating mound seems like it's held aloft by these posts and these tight ropes, but how the physics of it all works is beyond you. This is the Feywild, so it is as it is. And you are able to pull yourself up to one of the posts and dismount as your feet sink into the soggy, uh, wet ground at your feet. And in front of you is a large thatched hut much larger than any of the others that you have seen in this place. There are multiple floors and twists and turns. This place looks like something out of a Tim Burton film. And you stare at it for a while. The porch calls to you. The creaking of the wood and the door lightly swinging on its hinges. The the screen door lightly swinging on its hinges. Kremi, it actually reminds you of some of the houses you would have seen Mm. in the swamps around Dogway. 
parts of it uh, consumed by murky swamp water. And this, as you look over the edge, um, you get out of the bucket and it quickly zips back down towards Willie and Wendell. Um, <laughs> can you imagine? They, they are both dead now. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Jeremy, serves them right. <laughs> Uh, but you watch as the bucket disappears into the fog and you look down and it feels like you are surrounded by a sea of clouds. Oh. And if you were to suspend your disbelief, you would imagine that you could step off of this platform and find solid ground, but you know that's not true. That you are held aloft in the sky here. But your attention turns back to the house itself. And it is dark at this point. It's early evening, but being surrounded by the fog as you are, it is significantly less light is hitting this place than you would expect. And inside you see the flickering of candlelight in windows all over the place. A soft orange glow. Anyone else have felt the call of the void? Hmm? What? It was one of just like, man, wouldn't it be fun just to like step out onto that sea of clouds? And you know that you'd probably die, but kind of a cool way to go out, you know what I mean? It's just your lizard brain talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. I've never felt that at all. Do people actually feel that? Does that actually have a, a name? Call of the Void? That's what I always called it. No, it just looks uh, <clears throat> surprisingly tranquil to me. It's quite calm. Yeah. It's a whole sea of clouds up here. It looks like it's just us, the sky, and a gross hut behind us. Nobody else. <clears throat> it's almost <clears throat> tranquil. Tranquil. What? Tranquil. You're all right. One of these days, I think we're just going to have to go through all the words. When I did my slam poetry about tranquility, you didn't correct me then? Uh, well. I had a whole phase! You seem so proud. <laughs> I appreciate you, Frosty. Uh, all right. I always thought that the call of the void was like when you make a call on one of your rocky talkies and it just goes. Burr, 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 burr. Oh, I've heard that one. <laughs> And you're like, oh wow, this sounds like I'm calling the void. That's what I thought the call of the void was. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's surprising. It doesn't need to go that hard, but it does, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, let's go inside. <laughs> Open the door. <laughs> you make your way you make your way to the dilapidated porch that surrounds the front of this house and the loud creaking of the wood um, erupts out around you almost shockingly loud up this high as it echoes out over the rest of downfall but you imagine that that sound is uh, relegated just to the spot that you're in that the fog would muffle it, and that no one in Downfall would hear a thing. And maybe even that no one inside would hear a thing. As you move the screen door to the side, the loud creaking makes you jump for a second. This is unlike any place that you've been in Prismere so far. There is a sense of dread in this place. Oh. A feeling of something dark. Something that you haven't felt in any other place that you've been to here. Nothing that you felt, the witch-like carnival. Your experience so far with the Fae has been something of beauty and whimsy. And there have been things that have been questionable morally, but nothing has felt like this. Mm -hmm. And as you open the door, you feel the warm air rush towards you and you can feel the stink of the fetid swamp, much more strong than even the scent that you felt when you first got here almost as if the swamp itself is decaying inside of this place. And you can hear the noises of the wood. It sounds almost like it's expanding and contracting with the um, 
with the liquid, with the water of the swamp inside of it. All of the noises sound louder and yet quiet at the same time. The smells pungent, but not enough to turn your stomach, at least not just yet. As you stare into the room ahead of you, having been in houses before, you would expect this room to be a living room. You would expect this room to be a place of rest and relaxation, maybe something like you saw in Twigs in Twigs Inn. Mm. But what meets your eye is not what you would expect. What you see is a recessed pool lined with moldy clay tiles that takes up most of this large square room. Stagnant water fills the depression to a depth of one foot. Rising from the pool's center is the head of a stone well that gives off an unpleasant, pungent odor. In one corner of the pool stands a tall, dirty, freestanding mirror in an oval frame, and floating on the water is a large lily pad. Creaky wooden floorboards are arranged in a ten-foot-wide raised walkway around the pool. This walkway is crowded with shelves, tables, and stools in all shapes and styles. Almost every available surface is littered with stacks of dirty plates, scraps of food, and old junk. Dressing dummies are pushed together in one corner, and a wooden staircase spirals up from another corner. Five closed doors lead from the room. And as you stare at this, you hear one of the doors shut and some skittering. Your eyes dart this way or that as one of the candles blows out and smoke billows out around the room. You hear soft giggling in the corner. And as you look, you see a shadow creeping out from behind one of the doors, a tiny shape, almost frog-like, almost human-like. And as it moves across the wall, almost like a shadow in the room, it emerges next to another one of the doors and you catch the sight of it in the soft candlelight as it turns towards you. Its eye is incredibly large and amphibian-like, its <clears throat> mouth a large gaping maw. And you've seen this before, but not quite this. This must be a Lornling, a tiny version of Bavlorna herself, made by her own hands in a disgusting mockery of her own image as it looks at you and it smiles and giggles. And that is where we'll end the session. Oh. It's one of those little guys. <laughs> I hate those fucking guys. Get out of here. Thanks Thank for running the session, guys. Nikki. You're welcome. Thank you. Unbelievable ending. Oh, shit. <clears throat> Holy fuck. I was reminded of the ghost kids. Oh, remember really? That, remember the, the... Oh, Willa. Willa. Hmm? I kind of want to oh, kill the hag. Uh, I forgot about that. I just killed all you, those kids. you wanted to kill the hag from the beginning. No, well, I just wanted to do so as a tie. <laughs> right, that's why. I just That's why I waited for everyone else to vote. That's a good advantage and chill moment. Uh, We're not done. <sighs> We're not We're done? done. We're not done. What's next? Andy. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, uh, what's next is Vanches and Chill. We're going to do an extra special segment that we do after every stream session of D&D &D, where we talk about our favorite moments. Uh, we theorize, of which we will have some. And uh, most importantly, we answer your questions and comments, so don't go anywhere. But I have to use a little bugbear for him. Uh, go ahead. What, what do we got? Oh, we have to thank some people, too, as well. We're going to thank some folks. Uh, we have a lot of people to thank. Um, we ha are back next on Monday. I have to remember this. Yeah, this we're back is, on this Monday for our third episode of Neon Knights Woo! and Adventures Talk Show. Uh, it's been going pretty well, d yeah. despite some uh, technical difficulties that we are solving uh, this week. So hopefully, not hopefully, I know yeah, that the issue that was happening the last two weeks are, we are should be solved. Will not be. It will not be an issue. Yes. Um, I yes, I and you can come and ask us questions there, and we can talk about it in a relaxed sort of talk show format. Uh, Andy also leads us through some really fun topics related to D and D or Avantress or um, philosophy, all yeah, sorts of stuff. We talked about a lot of stuff. It's it's a surprising format. It's not like Avantress and Chill. It's as no. much as I love Avantress and Chill, there. It we really, we yeah. get into the trenches and really like dig our teeth into some topics. Well, yeah. it's, it's been we can, already immediately satisfying to, to do. We I can monologue that. and it's part of the whole gig as opposed to like needing to kind of have short little snippets relatively. Yeah, yeah. If so it's a, it's, a, it's a really nice format to kind of hang and just chat with us. Um, um, and then after that, we're back next Wednesday with more Once Upon a Witch Light. So you can see our negotiation or fight or who knows with uh, Bavorna. And 
basically that back and forth. We got some Patreon coming up. Oh, and for the month of June, limited time only, we are offering the biggest possible discount on Patreon annual subscriptions. So if you feel like you're going to sub to us on Patreon for a year, you might as well save 60%. Now is the time. It is the biggest discount that Patreon allows, period. And we're running it through June. And we are only adding more content to it. We're only adding more stuff. We have a whole brand new vlog series that is only ever going to be Patreon exclusive. It will never be on YouTube. It will never be available in any other format. Uh, called uh, Drive to D and D, uh, and all of our vlogs go on Patreon. Um, and I'm going to try to do more of my bizarre, uh, <laughs> mad cat vlogging. Um, and with that, unless there's anything else, I'll bet you some chill. Let's chill. <laughs>